Town of Oak face off against another talented club in a battle of the best teams in Idaho. Orofino is looking to put another notch in the win column, and it all starts with today's matchup. You're listening to Maniac Baseball, a Central Idaho Broadcasting Sports presentation. And now to the field we go with our broadcast team. Welcome everyone to the Central Idaho Broadcasting Sports presentation of Orofino High School Baseball. Today the Maniac Squad under the watchful eyes of second year head coach Scotty Tonnevolt face off against another talented club in a battle of the best teams in Idaho. Orofino is looking to put another notch in the win column and it all starts with today's matchup. You're listening to Maniac Baseball, a Central Idaho Broadcasting Sports presentation. And now to the field we go with our broadcast team. And we'd like to welcome you all to the ball field here at Orofino High as we get set for another 2A high school baseball action between the Orofino Maniacs and the Grangeville Bulldogs. I'm Jeff Jones, and joining me in the booth today, C.J. Thompson, as we get set for this first league matchup between these two squads uh, this year. Orofino has already ventured in to league play uh, just after spring break, as a matter of fact. The uh, Maniacs uh, traveled to St. Mary's High School for a doubleheader. They won the first matchup handily by a score of 10 to 7. Uh, and then the second game was tied at 4-4 when they could not complete the game due to weather and or lights. And so they have said they will complete the rest of that contest uh, at a time to be announced later and at a location. Uh, to be announced later. So right now, the Maniacs are 1-0 and o in league uh, as they get set to take on a, the Grangeville Bulldogs. Grangeville, uh, they are 6-0 and o on the season, as a matter of fact. They, too, have been playing exceptionally well throughout the year. We'll talk about uh, the teams that they've faced off against as we uh, go along here uh, throughout the uh, pregame show. But any time that these two teams get together, it's always a great matchup. Uh, head coach Lee Nadiger of the Grangeville Bulldogs has brought his squad in from the field uh, after a uh, long catch and uh, a little fungo. Uh, the Maniacs uh, are over along the left field line. Uh, they are in long toss right now as we get ready for this game to get underway at 4 o'clock. Uh, you might have heard earlier that we were scheduled to get underway at 3. This game has been changed uh, a couple of times. It's just unfortunate, but we are scheduled for a doubleheader today between these two squads. The first matchup here at uh, 4 o'clock and then the uh, second contest at 6. We'll bring you, of course, this first matchup between the uh, two teams as, uh, again, they lead the league right now. Both teams are undefeated overall. The Maniacs 1-0 and in league. Uh, and again, as we said, uh, they will finish up their uh, second contest with St. Mary's at a time and a location to uh, be determined later. Uh, the Maniacs also with uh, a matchup against uh, the Kellogg Wildcats and uh, Priest River. All these teams are league teams for this Maniac squad. And so Orofino bouncing right along through the season here so far, but there's so much more left to go. Uh, CJ Thompson has joined me and you've just brought the uh, lineup up from Orofino, CJ. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. <coughs> Happy to be here. You well, know, it's good to have you up here as uh, it's been in the first uh, games ever since we left prior to spring break anyway, but the Maniacs have been busy. This is a very good looking squad, um, evidenced by the way that they battled back from some of the earlier games this season. You can see that they never quit. Uh, Scotty Tonneville in a post game interview that he came up here and gave to us after Clarkston High School that uh, 10 run or excuse me, that 10 inning game, you could just see that the way he coaches these kids, they don't give up. Yeah, most definitely. They have all of the physical gifts and talents, but then they're also bought in emotionally. 
and uh, into the system that he has been building, and it has been showing dividends. You know, and the great thing about it is that, you know, while there are three seniors on this squad, a lot of the underclassmen have been coming through. Even uh, his young son, a sophomore, uh, he came up with the game-winning RBI in that 10-inning matchup uh, with Clarkston. And so you need to rely on those underclassmen to come through. I mean, if you're in the lineup, you need to produce. Yeah, most definitely. And even before that, Jager uh, had given them a chance to win in regulation by reaching and ended up getting into scoring position. They just were unable to bring him across. So, CJ, uh, this is a different kind of a day. I mean, you're matching up with the Grangeville Bulldogs. And over the years, and I know you've been here for about 10 years, you've been watching these matchups. These, these two teams really don't like each other very much. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. And it doesn't really matter who is... Uh, who's the best at the time or uh, you know who has uh, more talent on that squad at that time it is just a different ball game when these two teams get together it uh, is always uh, they always duke it out because they've been playing against each other since they were kids <laughs> yeah that's right that's right I mean they play travel ball against one another when they get into Babe Ruth and sometimes they even have uh, some of the little league teams that are that are playing one another and so they know each other ever since they're little guys. I mean, you, all you have to do is say names like Tondevold and Lindsley. You know that these two teams have seen each other in the past, and it's, a, it's storied. I mean, their fathers are telling their sons, when I played this game, this is what it looked like. And so you want to live up to maybe what your father or your uncle or whoever it was in your family that played for your high school, they tell you all kinds of stories about this matchup. And some of them are even playing relatives. So, uh, yeah. Gavin Ebert, you know, he's uh, the cousin of Gavin Christopherson. Uh, that's right. That's right. And so that's really something else when you get a chance to match up with uh, family members. CJ and I take a break. When we come back, it's the Riverside Physical Therapy schedules and scores. Don't go away. We'll return in a moment. We toss them. They're awesome. By now you've heard of Orofino's finest lunch buffet. All you can eat Pizza Factory Buffet. Filled with pizza breadsticks, fresh green salad makings, and fruits. But did you know with the purchase of nine lunch buffets, you'll get the 10th free? Ask for your 10 punch card with your next visit to the Pizza Factory and begin saving today. Free lunch from the Pizza Factory. We toss them. They're awesome. Pizza Factory. The forensic analyst searched for clues to what could have caused the house fire. Could that be? Traces of starch. Suddenly the pieces came together. The fire was started by... An over-microwaved potato? And we covered it. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. At 622 Bryden Avenue in Lewiston, see me, Greg Kimberling, your local farmer's insurance agent. You know what nobody misses? dial-up internet. The same goes for monthly checking account fees. P1FCU's Ascend checking is free. Plus it has all sorts of free benefits like remote deposit, credit score monitoring, and more. Meanwhile, some people are paying as much as $12 a month for their checking. Some things should just be free. Open your P1FCU Ascend checking today at p1fcu.org slash free. Insured by NCUA. Now is the perfect time to get into shape. Winter is in the rearview mirror and the fun and adventure of spring lies ahead. Take a moment to stop by and visit the staff at Riverside Physical Therapy. On 126th Street, Highway 12, let Riverside Physical Therapy help you get back into shape. A free evaluation of nagging shoulder, neck, and leg injuries with a mapped out direction on recovery. Now is the perfect time to get active all season long with a visit to Riverside Physical Therapy in Orofino. Okay, and Gavin, third then? Third, right, third, sorry, third. So Loudon is either going to be in right or left, and then Landon will be, okay. And then Landon's probably in right. I will go confirm that. Okay. Okay, that sounds about right right there, but... Hey, we welcome you back, and it is time for the Riverside Physical Therapy Schedules and Scores. And with that, I turn it over to C.J. Thompson. 
Time now for Riverside Physical Therapy schedules and scores. For small aches and pains, reoccurring shoulder problems to back problems, see Riverside Physical Therapy today. In high school baseball action in the region, not a whole lot going on. We have today's a double dip between rivals Orofino and Grangeville, and then the St. Mary's Lumberjacks travel to Potlatch for a single contest. In high school softball, it's a matchup between the Maniacs and the Bulldogs once again over at the elementary school softball field. That is a doubleheader as well. In high school golf, Nez Perce, Lapley, and Orofino are at a Mullen invite in Pinehurst. And in high school tennis, Orofino has a cul-de-sac in town. In scores Saturday, the Lewiston Bengal softball team took care of Post Falls twice, 7-1 and 17-5. A Soton split with Kettle Falls, winning the first game 13-12 before falling in the nightcap 13-7. In baseball, Lewiston got clobbered by Post Falls 19-1 before reba rebounding with a 2-1 victory in the second game of the doubleheader. The scheduled game between Grangeville and Clearwater Valley of Kooski for Saturday was postponed due to weather conditions. There's a makeup game set for Tuesday afternoon at 4.30. The scheduled doubleheader between Lake City of Coeur d'Alene and Moscow has been postponed because of weather. They haven't announced a makeup time. And Potlatch and Prairie was also postponed due to inclement weather. No makeup has been announced at this point. Also, congratulations to the Orofino Maniac track team for their excellent performance as both boys and girls took second to Kamii at the Kamii Invitational. The four and six Seattle Mariners are in action today for the first of a three-game series on the road against the Toronto Blue Jays. Be sure to tune in for game two tomorrow from the Rogers Center pregame at three. First pitch at 4.07. All the play-by-play -play action with the voice of the Mariners, Rick Riz, right here on AM 13 KLER. And that is Schedules and Scores, brought to you by our good friends at Riverside Physical Therapy. Our coverage of the Orofino Maniacs and the Grangeville Bulldogs returns after this. It's amazing that we wear something different every day to work and try our best to change up our look. New shoes or shirt or even a haircut can really make a difference. But when was the last time you changed out those glasses? If it's been more than a couple years since you visited your optometrist, now's the time. Dr. Rick Lindgren and staff at Family Eye Care are here to take care of your family's eyes. If your vision changes, even slightly, those old glasses you're wearing may not be doing you any favors. It only takes a few minutes to have your eyes professionally examined. You just may be surprised at how much you've been missing. Find new brand name frames for less than you might think. Accentuate your personal style with statement making glasses for a look that's bold, original, and unforgettable. Let Family Eye Care help take care of your eyes. Call and make an appointment today at 476 4814. Family Eye Care, Michigan Avenue, Orofino, and Highway 12 West in Kamii. Come on in and see the difference. Today you have numerous options when selecting your IRA and deciding which account is right for you is one of the most important decisions you will make for your financial future. Hi, this is Terry Bowling with Camus Financial Services. Give me a call to find out which IRA fits your financial needs or to update your current IRA saving strategy. You can reach me, Terry Bowling, at 476-7100 or stop by my office at 230 Johnson Avenue in Orfino to set up a free, no obligation appointment today. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Hi, this is Terry Bowling with Camus Financial Services. I am available to help you select the right investment options when you are faced with early retirement, changing or losing a job, or any other lifestyle changes that warrant a review of your financial plan. You can reach me, Terry Bowling, at 476-7100 or stop by my office at 230 Johnson Avenue or Fino to set up a free, no obligation appointment today. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Hi there, it's Corky with Les Schwab Tires, and I'd like to tell you something I love about our history. Seventy-some years ago, we set the standard for tire service with values that come from the heart. Treat your customers like family and earn their trust. Never sell anyone a thing they don't need. Put safety first and customers will follow. That's how we did business then, and it's how we do it now. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952.
Our national anthem as we get set for the matchup today between the Orofino Maniacs and the Grangeville Bulldogs. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Jones and along with C.J. Thompson, we welcome you to this first game of a scheduled double dip between the Orofino Maniacs who stand at 8 and 0 oh on the season and the visiting Grangeville Bulldogs who are 6 and 0. Oh. The Bulldogs are coached by Mr. Lee Nadiger and uh, I'm going to go ahead and run down the starting lineup for the offense for the Bulldogs. It'll be David Goikoa, who is today's scheduled starting pitcher, who will lead it off. Ray Holes Jr. is in center field, hitting second. Catching today and third in the order is Cody Clement. In the cleanup spot is left fielder Sam Lindsley. JT Jackson is over at first. He will hit fifth, and then the DH is being utilized by the Bulldogs today. In the sixth spot, it's James Argon. Uh, Taven Ebert hits seventh in the order. He's the starting second baseman. Kaysen Sickles, the right fielder for the Bulldogs, hits eighth. And then Carter Munt is over at third base. He'll hit ninth in the order. The DH is for Jack Bransford. He is today's starting shortstop. So again, defensively for the Bulldogs, Goikoa, Holes Jr., Clement, Lindsley, Jackson, Aragon, Ebert, Sickles, and Munt. CJ, let's take a look at that starting offense for the Maniacs, all right? At the starting defense for the Maniacs? Starting defense for the Maniacs, pardon me. Uh, on the mound, uh, Ethan Gilmore. He will be uh, tossing to his battery mate Silas Naranjo behind the dish. Over at third base will be uh, Gavin Christofferson. Jager Tonnevold is in the hot hole at short. He is the reigning Pizza Factory player of the game winner, as Jeff and I mentioned earlier. Bodie Howell is uh, starting at second base, and Dash Barlow will round out the infield at first. In center field, the speedy Aiden Olive in the left is Loudon Cochran, and Landon Hudson is in right. Now that we hurried through all of that stuff, we should let you know that we do not have any officials on the field as of yet, so there's not been an exchange of lineups. Uh, we gave you the lineup that uh, both of the uh, head coaches passed along to us, but nothing is official until they're actually into the hands of our officials. And so, CJ, uh, while we have a moment here before uh, this game gets underway, let's talk a little bit about these Grangeville Bulldogs. Six and O. Oh. Uh, you had uh, a moment to take a look at uh, some of the teams that they've played. They, as a matter of fact, went on a long trip down south to uh, the Boise Valley. And from what we understand, they had uh, two or three games that were scheduled down there, and they all got washed out. And so that uh, squad had to turn around and come back to Grangeville, which is just absolutely unfortunate. But what, uh, who have the Grangeville Bulldogs faced off against so far this year? <clears throat> well, it looks as though they started things off with a uh, date against the uh, Troy Trojans, a uh, little white Pine League action, and they came away with a victory 6-3. to three. Then they uh, had some uh, league bouts with Priest River, a doubleheader, uh, the following day, their second day of the season, and they put up 42 runs on the day against Priest River. Wow. Uh, kind of sounds a bit like the Maniacs at their tournament. Uh, as uh, Priest, they beat Priest River 22 to nothing, and uh, then 20 to one. Then uh, another league about as they 10 run at St. Mary's, 10 to nothing, and down Bonner's Ferry a couple of times, 11 to one, and 11 to nothing. So in those six games on the season, they have given up just five runs. All right, and so with that double dip victory over uh, St. Mary's. Uh, Grangeville 2-0 and in league play and or did I hear a Kellogg uh, game in there that I just missed no just uh, St. Mary's they also have uh, is so Priest River is Priest not yes Priest River is right yeah so they're 4-0 and actually in uh, league play and so Grangeville right now on top that's where they they like to be the Orofino Maniacs are you know just right behind them they're waiting to finish up a uh, contest against uh, St. Mary's that got either rained out or lights were uh, inoperable at St. Mary's and so uh, that game was tied at 4 to 4 so this is has all the makings of a good game it really does. And you take a look at the names that you just read off uh, uh, for uh, 
for the uh, Grangeville Bulldogs. I mean, these guys, uh, Holes Jr., uh, Lindsley, uh, Ebert, I mean, they all hit the ball really well. They field the ball well. Very few uh, errors on this ball club, coached by Lee Nadiger in the past anyway. And so uh, I can only imagine this is not going to be a slugfest. I believe this is going to be a, a you know a one-run game somewhere along the lines. Yeah, both teams uh, throwing one of their stud pitchers. I believe David Goikoa is their top pitcher. We've seen him, it seems like, forever, and yeah. he has been giving us problems forever. And uh, then Ethan Gilmore, uh, he came over from Lewiston, and he has looked pretty darn good. And I know that he, uh, I believe... He, I had heard a rumor that he was an MVP for the Cubs the year that he played for them. And that uh, was who again? In, I'm sorry. Legion, uh, Ethan Gilmore, who will be on the mound for Orfino. Well, you always like to have, you know, hard-throwing guys, you know, somebody who can throw spitballs up there and get the other team oh, to just wave at. Uh, but, again, I, I just believe... Both these teams hit the ball exceptionally well. They field the ball very well. Uh, I, like I said, I just expect a one, maybe two run game. And this is a double header. So both of these clubs are going to hopefully be able to ri rely on their starting pitchers to go deep into the game and hopefully not have to pull them because of pitches or anything like that. You just want solid defense behind your pitcher today in order to come up with a victory. Either of these teams are looking at that. That you do, and we did see a little bit of Ethan Gilmore that opening weekend against Bonners Ferry. I believe actually that opening game against Bonners Ferry, he came in relief of a Gavin Christofferson who pitched great out of the gates, and Ethan Gilmore looked very good. So looking for more good things on the mound from him today. Well, our officials are down at home plate where uh, both head coaches uh, – Tonavold and Nadiger have exchanged lineups. Uh, Scotty now going over ground rules uh, with uh, Coach Nadiger. There's the shaking of the hands, and we are ready to go for this one. Going to get underway just a minute or two late, but that's okay. If you're on the road driving to the game, just drive cautiously, get here, and uh, we're going to have a couple of fantastic uh, baseball games here. The Maniacs have broke from their huddle, and they head out onto the field. Where onto the hill, Ethan Gilmore is about ready to take his uh, warm-up tosses, and and that is actually that's Gavin not Ethan, that's <laughs> Gavin Christofferson. I was going to say, wait a minute, you know, and the Maniacs have always uh, trotted out their number two, and looks like Ethan uh, and is over Ethan's there. wearing his uh, number eleven uh, jersey, I believe, isn't he? Or, uh, excuse me, uh, Gavin, 12. Yeah, Gavin's wearing. So I'm not sure exactly what where the change is at there, but we'll uh, see if we can follow along here. Ethan Gilmore is over at third base, it looks like. So just a switch between Gavin and Ethan. So uh, taking his warm-up tosses right now, Gavin. As you said, CJ, we've seen him, and he has been very, very effective throughout this season. He has been very good. He started off the season with an excellent start against Bonner's Ferry. And actually had the Maniacs first hit of the season as well in that ball game was a double. Well, as he takes his warm-up tosses, coming over from third base is Gilmore. Here's the throw down to second, and the infield will meet right behind the mound, as, or at least Ethan Gilmore will. He'll retrieve the throw and give it to Gavin and put it in his glove and said, okay, kid, let's go. Big game here. It's the Grangeville Bulldogs and Orofino Maniacs as Goikoa. Steps in and hits from the right side. And working from the windup is Gavin Christofferson. The senior begins his motion, and here's the first pitch on the way. It's a fastball taken off the dish, and we are underway here at 4.03. Ball one to Gokoya as he steps back in, opens up his stance, angles just slightly down the third baseline. 
The 1-0 on the way is swung on. Fly ball gap, left center field, and this one is going, going, and up to the base of the fence. Rounding first on his way to second and coasting in. Here is the throw, but David Koikoa, a ringing double out into the gap of left center field, and CJ, that was about five feet away from a home run. Yeah, he got all of that one. Gavin <coughs> just hung something up there. Got away from him a little bit, and Goey Koa made him pay, was able to square it up and give it a ride. So just like that, the Bulldogs with the runner in scoring position for Holes Jr. Working from the stretch now, Christofferson deals the first pitch. It's a fastball taken for strike one. Wow, I'll tell you what. Goey Koa just gave that ball a ride. And from our advantage point, it looked as though it had home run distance. Here's the pitch swung on. It's going to be popped up. Foul side of first, giving chase is Naranjo, and he can't make the catch in front of the first base dugout. Lays himself out as he never took his eyes off the ball, but he knew he was getting extremely close to that dugout and felt the warning track under his feet. Laid his glove out but couldn't make the catch. It just goes for a strike and Holes Jr. lives to fight another day. Yeah, you start to get nervous when you can feel that lumen as you're giving chase. Jr. steps back in, right toe on that chalk line. Pitch is going to be swung on, popped up, foul side once again of first and this one's going to make the screen out of play. Nothing in two, count remains the same. Goikoa again over at second after that 1-0 ringing double out into left center field. The big right-hander steps back in now in anticipation of a changeup. He's got that left foot on the chalk in front of home plate. Here's the 0-2 inside, rung him up. Ray Holes Jr. will sit down looking at strike three. That's the first strikeout for Christofferson. That's a great way to uh, get back into this contest, CJ. You find yourself giving up a big double to the leadoff batter, and then you come back and you get Holes Jr. in that two spot looking at a third strike. That'll give the old confidence a boost. Clement now will come to the plate. First offering to him, misses just a touch outside, 1-0. Gavin again continues to work from the stretch. He comes set letter high, and the 1-0 is a comebacker, and booted out at second base, rounding third coming home is Goikoa. He will score, and Cody Clement finds himself at first via the air on second baseman Howell at second. Stepping up to the plate Tough play as Gavin Christofferson skips rope out on the mound, CJ. About took his right toe off. It made its way out to the right side of Bodie Howell, but he just didn't play it well, and it ends up out into shallow right field. Uncharacteristic miscue from Howell at second. Swinging strike, and the ball gets away from Naranjo and Sam Lindsley just basically waves at a pitch for strike one and on the play Clement goes from first to second. Maniac's looking a little sloppy out of the gate. Nothing in one with a runner in scoring position. One across in the top of the first inning. Christofferson with the look at second. He'll come to the plate. Kind of a pitch out as Silas Naranjo out of his crouch and to his right has a good eye on Clement out at second base. One ball, one strike now to Sam. I'll tell you, Sam, one heck of an athlete. You're not just kidding. He does it all. 1-1 one, one on the way to the senior Lindsley inside with a curveball and it just missed. That almost looked like the same pitch that Holes Jr. got rung up on. A batter ago. Two and one now to Sam. As he hits from the right side, stands even with the plate. Away from second is Clement, and the pitch is high for ball three, three and one. 
Jackson is on deck, and should he get an opportunity, Aragon is the designated hitter. He's in the hole. Three balls and one strike. And the delivery on the way to the plate. Swung on, this one is going to be laced out into center field. Played on a hop by Olive, and holding up at third on the single from Lindsley is Clement. So runners at the corners. Gavin didn't look like anything was wrong with that pitch, but Lindsley just timed it up nicely. We have a courtesy runner coming out right now. This is Thane Williams, who is going to run for Clement. Of course, Clement, the catcher, one of two guys given a courtesy runner in this high school baseball game. Jackson now will come to the plate. And the fastball. Here's the pitch. The throw down to second. Now the throw back home to first at home and sliding in safe. At home is Williams running for Clement. So Lindsley is successful in stealing second. The throw was just a little high into the left of Howell, who came in and covered the bag from second. The return throw back to home not in time. It is 2 0 Grangeville. Grangeville ran that, ran that exceptionally well. One ball, no strikes to Jackson at the plate. Here's the pitch to him, swinging strike. And the count runs to one and one. Grangeville has come out very aggressive here in the top of the first inning. They lead it 2 nothing. Christofferson's next pitch is going to be golfed over the left side of the infield. Short hop picked up by Tonnevold, and the toss across is good for the second out. On the play, Lindsley advances second to third. All right, let's, did I miss a third out here, CJ? Uh, I didn't have. I only had. I only well, had two outs. Yeah, same here. Well, nonetheless, uh, we have three gone, and the teams are going to their, to their respective dugouts. 2 nothing. Grangeville will come back after this. Hi there, it's Corky with Les Schwab Tires and I'd like to tell you something I love about our history. Seventy some years ago we set the standard for tire service with values that come from the heart. Treat your customers like family and earn their trust. Never sell anyone a thing they don't need. Put safety first and customers will follow. That's how we did business then, and it's how we do it now. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. His wife's words echoed in his mind. You never fix anything around here. Well, today that would change. He would fix the water heater. He'd show her that he wasn't just the man of the house, he was the handyman of this house. He was more than capable, oh no. And we covered it. UFH2O. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. Hi, this is Greg Kimberling. We invite you to see us at our new location at 622 Bryden Avenue in Lewiston. And welcome back. Bring home the win or if you know, sponsoring today's OHS broadcast are your friends at Peak Physical Therapy and a Kimberling Insurance. It is two to nothing in Grangeville as we head to the home half of the first. And let's take a look at the batting order for the Maniacs. Uh, Aiden Olive will be in the leadoff spot. He is in center field, followed by shortstop Jager Tonnevold. Made a nice play there at the end of the first. Bodie Howell. The second baseman will hit third, followed by a cleanup hitter, Dash Barlow. And it looks like everyone is heading back out on yeah, the field. They, yeah, they've changed it. We heard there was interference, and that's where the, uh, the second out came from that we couldn't find. But then there must have been a protest from Nadiger. And so we're going to go ahead and put base runners back on, evidently. So there's going to be two outs. 6-3 is the put out on Jackson. But Lindsley... I believe is going to, no, they're going to go ahead and say that Jackson is safe at first and Lindsley is out. So the interference is there, and I don't understand why there's not an out over at first, CJ. The play was in plenty of time, but we're going to go ahead and just go with the, what the officials say. There are two outs, and Jackson is going to reach on 
a fielder's choice. And so the first pitch to Argon, the DH, is taken for a ball 1-0. and Everybody having a difficult time on this. Very first day back in baseball. Here's the 1-0. It's going to be popped up right side of the infield. This is Howell who parks himself underneath it, makes the catch, and now we are done here with the first. Don't go away. We'll come back starting lineup for the Maniacs right after this. Now is a perfect time to get into shape. Winter is in the rearview mirror and the fun and adventure of spring lies ahead. Take a moment to stop by and visit the staff at Riverside Physical Therapy. On 126th Street, Highway 12, let Riverside Physical Therapy help you get back into shape. A free evaluation of nagging shoulder, neck, and leg injuries with a mapped out direction on recovery. Now is the perfect time to get active all season long with a visit to Riverside Physical Therapy in Orofino. You know what nobody misses? Dial up internet. The same goes for monthly checking account fees. P1FC use Ascend Checking is free. Plus it has all sorts of free benefits like remote deposit, credit score monitoring, and more. Meanwhile, some people are paying as much as $12 a month for their checking. Some things should just be free. Open your P1FCU Ascend Checking today at p1fcu.org slash free. Insured by NCUA. And we welcome you back once again as we head to the home half of the first two to nothing at Grangeville. Look at the Maniacs batting order. Aiden Olive in the leadoff spot. The he is in center field, David followed by shortstop Jager Tonnevold. Bodie Howell will hit third. He's at second base. Clean up duties go to Dash Barlow over at first. Followed fifth in the order by Silas Norano mm -hmm. behind the dish. Landon Hudson in right will hit sixth. Bottom third of the order is kicked off by Ethan Gilmore. He is at third base. Pitcher Gavin Christofferson will hit eighth. And Loudon Cochran in left will hit ninth. Once again, that is Olive, Tonavold, Howell, Barlow, Norano, Hudson, Gilmore, Christofferson, and Cochran for the Maniacs. And the field for the Bulldogs, Jeff. Goikoya out on the mound taking his warm-up tosses. His battery mate is Cody Clements. JT Jackson is at first. Taven Ebert at second. Carter Munt at third. Jack Bransford is at short. And then the fielders from left to right for Grangeville, Sam Lindsley, Ray Holes Jr., and Casey Sickles. So here we go. Aiden Olive to lead things off here in the bottom of the first. Maniacs down 2 nothing to Grangeville. Fastball is tossed up there. Strike at the knees to Aiden. Nothing and one. My gosh. First inning, the top of the first inning. <laughs> what a mess that was. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the old one to Aiden and misses inside for a ball. One ball, one strike. Goey Koa, he's always brought quite a bit of pace and uh, looks like he's added a little bit this year and he's always had a real snappy curveball. He brings some good stuff. Here's the 1-1 one, one fastball swung on a chopper to the left side of the infield, played on the third hop by Bransford, and the toss is high, and unable to uh, get his foot down on the bag is Jackson, and so Aiden Olive is going to leg out a single. We're going to give him a single because I think his foot was actually there before uh, JT Jackson uh, even clubbed that ball. So a single to Aiden Olive, that brings up Tonneville now. So working from the stretch, David Goikoa away from first, Olive. And the pitch is going to be swung on a little dribbler foul up the first baseline. As Jager took the top off that, you could see the spin on the ball just about coming off of that bat. It looked like a, a cue ball on your pool table with lots of English on it. Nothing in one to Jager. Goikoa fires the next offering. It's a fastball. Low and away. One ball and one strike now to Jager. Jager, the hero from the extra innings game against Clarkston. Just hit the ball so very well. Played defense really well during that game as well, CJ. Yeah, he gave that last ball a ride, too. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Inside him, boy, howdy. It just about took his head off. Backing out of the way just in time and down to second base goes Aiden Olive. Wow. Goikoa just held onto that ball a little too long, CJ. A little chin music right around the chest of the hitter, Jagger Tonneville. Two balls and a strike. Here's the next pitch. Fastball, low, four ball, three, three and one. 
And we know Aiden can really fly on the base pads. Anything drops to the outfield, and he's got an opportunity to score. Three balls and a strike to Jager. Next pitch is going to be swung on, hit hard. Right field, and it will drop just foul. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Giving that ball a ride was Jager, and he pinned it right up that right field line, but it just bounces foul by maybe 12 inches. Yeah, wow, did he ever. That ball was spelled trouble. And like you said, Aiden Olive with that speed, he had already taken off on the pitch. He would have easily scored. Three balls, two strikes to Jager. Here's the Goyko pitch outside, ball four. So Jager will draw a base on balls. First walk issued by any pitcher in today's baseball game. Okay, number eight. So two aboard for the Maniacs here in the bottom the half of the first. Bodie They're Howell. down 2 nothing to Grangeville. And here's the three hitter in the lineup, Bodie Howell. Pitch to Bodie, swung on. Here's a chopper over to second, possible double play. Relay to second for one, and not good on the relay down to first. Down on the fielders, or Bodie Howell reaches on a fielder's choice, but Jager goes down 6-4 for the first out on the play. Aiden moves Dash over to third. Dash Barlow. Number nine. On deck, so number runners four. at the corners. Five. Defensive Five. signs now coming from Clenements in front of home plate. Doesn't look like there's been much defensive movement by the infield. High and tight, the first pitch. Ball one to Dashel. So the game tying run now aboard in Bodie Howe over at first base. David studies the sign from Cody as he squats down behind the dish, sets directly behind the dish, and the pitch is high and away for ball two. Not where Cody was set up. He was looking for something right down the middle of the plate, at least a little low. David delivers something way outside. He'll come set again at the letters. Goyko's pitch swung on, and this one is going to get laced foul up the third baseline. Two and one. So again, standing at third is Olive. Bodie Howell, who reached on a fielder's choice, moves away from first. He's being held on by Jackson. A quick check by Goyko over his left shoulder, and he ready to go to work. And this one's going to be hit hard right to the left fielder, making the catch as Lindsley tagging at third. Here comes the throw, and safe at home is Olive, and moving from... First to second is Bodie Howell on the throw in. So you're going to give a sacrifice to Dash Barlow as he lines that one hard to the glove of Sam Lindsley for the second out, but scoring is Olive. Two to one is our score. Greensville leads. Silas will come to the plate now. Pitch on the way to Silas is low. Knocked down at the plate by Clements. One ball, no strike to Naranjo. Two to one, our score. Grangeville on top of this one. The Maniacs working their way back into this one. Swinging through a high fastball is Silas. He wanted to give that one a ride. Two, or excuse me, one ball, one strike to the Maniac catcher. Away from second base is Howell. Nothing going on behind him. Here's the pitch. Curve ball inside just off of the glove of Clements. Not trying to take advantage of that is Howell. He maybe worked his way a quarter of the way towards third base and decided that ball wasn't far enough away. And Silas does the good job, puts that stop sign up. Don't, don't go for it. Here's the 2-1. Inside, ducking out of the way of the pitch is Naranjo. Three balls into strike now. Goiko has been struggling with his location a little bit here. Either his release point, CJ, it's a little early as we saw there, or it's a little late like we saw earlier. Here's the 3-1. Low for ball four. And so Silas will draw a base on balls. Second walk issued by Goikoa. 
The runners at first and second with two away, and here comes Landon Hudson. Up to the plate for the mania, number 20. Both teams, excellent, excellent pitchers On with some struggles out of the gate. Ethan Gilmore. Right now the Maniacs have a run on a hit. From the stretch, Goyko now steps off the back of the rubber and now he's going to call Clements out to visit with him. Maybe try and see if there's something they can do with the base runner out at second, Howell. Howell at second, Silas at first. Landon Hudson climbs back into the batter's box. Pitch on the way. Yeah, just a little above the letters for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Again, working from the stretch as he has just about all throughout this inning is David Goykoa. Outside for ball two, the next offering. Taking his time now is David Goyko as again he works from the stretch, checks the runner at second, and now he'll come to the plate. Fastball again, just a little high. Three balls and no strikes. So more than likely Randon, excuse me, Landon going to get the red light here with two gone. Wants to just see if he can find a hole over on the left side of that infield. Maybe bring the tying run home. Outside, ball four. So Landon draws a base on balls. That's going to load him up. Howell at third, Naranjo at second, and Landon at first. Here comes Ethan Gilmer. And that is the third walk issue here in the opening inning. Yeah, again, like you said, struggling with his location is Goikoa. He's going to go back to the windup now. Fastball low and inside. One ball and no strikes to Ethan. You know, Jeff, this is a pretty busy week for the Maniacs. <laughs> you got four games. Four games this, this week. week. We're covering all of them. We have uh, today, and then uh, we're back again on Wednesday, back on Friday, and back on Saturday. Yeah. Here's the one ball, no strike pitch to Gilmer. Inside, and he jackknifes out of the way of a fastball destined for his helmet, ball two. And I believe it'll be Marsing that is here on Friday and Saturday, and, and I believe that is who Grainville went to play and drove right. all the way there and then couldn't play. Weather is a terrible thing sometimes. Here's the 2-0 on the way to Gilmer. Inside for ball three, no place to put Ethan, and so David's got to throw a strike here. Christofferson is on deck. Runners with safety leads not being held on. Here's the 3 0 pitch. That's going to be a ball four at the hands, it looked like. And so picking up an RBI is Ethan Gilmer with his walk. And scoring from third base is Bodie Howell. It's now knotted up at two runs apiece. And now that is three straight walks. Okay, I know Gilla. you're getting hungry after school and work. And uh, Coach Nadiger has made his way out of that first base dugout. And he's called the infield together. Right now, up here at Maniac Baseball. I'll tell you what, CJ, uh, <laughs> the top of the first when we took a break, we were trying to figure out where the third out was at. Somebody told us and said, okay, well, we'll take that. And then, of course, they decided to bring Grangeville back out again. Things have been goofy ever since. Yeah, they really have. <laughs> it's uh, a couple of fantastic ball clubs that have uh, had some struggles here in the early going on both sides. Now Orfino's got a chance to blow the game wide open. Well, that's going to rest on the shoulders of Gavin Christofferson hitting in the eight spot. And you know this kid can hit the cover off the ball, takes a fastball inside, ball one, does Gavin. On the season, Gavin hitting 250. The infield playing for a play at home or at any base, pitch misses outside, two gone here. Anything dribbles to the infield and they're gonna wanna come home with it. Two balls, no strikes. 
Goikoa's next offering swung on and a hard hit ball right back up the middle. The go ahead run scores from third. Here comes the throw into the infield. Two runs plate, Naranjo and Hudson, and the Maniacs have taken a 4 2 lead. Wow, that was the pitch that Gavin was waiting for, and when he came, he was ready. He was. That was a slow curveball up there, CJ. Gavin timed it up nicely and sent it right back up the middle. Maniacs have taken the lead for the first time in this baseball game on the RBI single from Gavin Christofferson. Two RBI. Two RBI, yes. R2 in the book. Fastball misses. Oh, and they're going to call that a strike, or so says our home plate umpire, to Cochran. Nothing and one. Next pitch, swinging at a pitch off of the dish for ball two is Loudon. Two aboard, four across here in the bottom of the first inning. Maniacs on top, 4-2. Pitch is going to be swung on. This will be hit foul a long ways out of play. Talk about another athlete, this kid standing at home plate. Loudon Cochran, he's going to give you all that he has. Now the 0-2 on the way. There's a curveball called third strike. Loudon knew it as he stepped out of the box, took his hat off, and started making his way back towards that third base dugout. Four runs for the Maniacs on two hits. They left a couple out there. It's 4-2 after an inning of play. C.J., who does Grangeville have coming up? Bottom third of the order due up for the Bulldogs, Ebert, Sickles, and Munt when Jeff and I come back after this. Now is the perfect time to get into shape. Winter is in the rearview mirror and the fun and adventure of spring lies ahead. Take a moment to stop by and visit the staff at Riverside Physical Therapy. On 126th Street, Highway 12, let Riverside Physical Therapy help you get back into shape. A free evaluation of nagging shoulder, neck, and leg injuries with a mapped out direction on recovery. Now is the perfect time to get active all season long with a visit to Riverside Physical Therapy in Orofino. You know what nobody misses? Dial-up internet. The same goes for monthly checking account fees. P1FCU's Ascend checking is free. Plus it has all sorts of free benefits like remote deposit, credit score monitoring, and more. Meanwhile, some people are paying as much as $12 a month for their checking. Some things should just be free. Open your P1FCU Ascend checking today at p1fcu.org slash free. Insured by NCUA. Welcome back once again. Terry Bowling of Camus Financial Services and Riverside Physical Therapy. Say go Maniacs and win as we head to the top of the second. Orfino storming back and uh, taking a 4-2 to two lead. After the uh, first half inning, Grangeville scoring their two runs on two hits and a maniac error, while Orofino scoring their four runs on two hits. CJ and Orofino made hay when they could. Helped out by some walks. Taven Ebert will lead things off here in the Grangeville half of the second. And back out on the hill is Christofferson as the right-hander works from the windup. Kicks that left leg and fires the first pitch. And this one's going to get laced out into left field. Played on a hop out there by Loudon. So just like that, the first pitch Gavin tosses up there goes for a single off the bat of Taven. Yeah. Gavin's probably going to hear about that at Thanksgiving. Number nine. Probably, <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, again, like you were just talking about, Cousins playing this game. Sickles. The right fielder for the Bulldogs, big right-hander, crowds home plate. First pitch is swung through, strike one. So stepping back in, Kaysen ready for the pitch. And Gavin, working from the stretch, is set at the letters. And the pitch is inside, and it hit him. Looked to square up to bunt. <laughs> and... Again, there's a curveball that just got away from Gavin, and it plunks Kaysen. You know, and I'm, I'm going to tell you that Kaysen, he's a pretty big boy. You look at him down there, and I think he could take that curveball. Yeah. You know, 
I, I wouldn't be able to, but Never looking at that young man, I think he could. So two aboard now for the Bulldogs, bringing up the nine-hitter Munt. So two aboard, nobody gone here in the top of the second inning. Christofferson's first pitch is a high fastball, ball one. Double check this number here, CJ, because it looks like an eight. It's a six. Pitch it, is high. Yeah, it is a six. It is a six. All right, very good, ball two. Carter Munt, I remember when his dad used to play for the Grangeville Bulldogs a long time ago. Oh, wow. You know, what, what position he play? Number 12, David Everyone. Bola. Everyone. <laughs> he was a Munt. <laughs> <laughs> time called as uh, Scotty Tonnevold uh, heads out to the hill to visit with Christofferson. Naranjo also comes out from behind home plate. Again, talking about, I'm sure, let's make sure that we're on the same page as far as signs go. Short conversation as Scotty steps over that white chalk line, heads back to the third base dugout. Carter hitting in the nine spot with two aboard. And Gavin will work from behind the count. Two balls, no strikes, and here's the pitch. It's going to be swung on. A little looper out into shallow right field. Catch is made by second baseman Howell, and there's one gone. A little flare out there that Bodie knows how to cover a lot of ground in a very short period of time, CJ. That he does. He's That's solid second baseman. That's Bulldogs, number 12, earlier David air, very Bolipoa. uncharacteristic deck, of a usually steady glove. Christofferson directing traffic now. As we go to the top of the lineup for David Goikoa, who uh, doubled on a 1-0 pitch back in the top of the first. High and just a touch outside, ball one to David. David sent one to the wall in left center on the second pitch of the ball game. A double ended up scoring the first run for Grangeville. Runners away from first and second. Gavin fires a fastball low and away. It's knocked down at home plate by Naranjo for ball two. You just want to play it safe with this kid. Don't give him anything that he can make you eat. Two balls, no strikes. And again, Gavin from the stretch fires the next pitch. It's a fastball at the knees for a strike, two and one. You know, how well do you learn from your mistakes? Let's see what Gavin has learned here in the early going of this uh, game. Two, one pitch now on the way. Oh, a check swing. They'll appeal. Did he go? Yeah. Two balls, two strikes. David tried to hold it back on that swing, but it's where the barrel of the bat ends up. Is it in front of the shoulder or in front of home plate, which it was? Two balls, two strikes. Pitch is swung on a ground ball to the left side of the infield, and it's up over the shoulder of Jagger out into shallow left field. And so David will be safe via the air over at shortstop. Everybody moves up one station. Taven is at third, Kaysen at second. On and that's just unfortunate, CJ. The uh, two errors that the Maniacs have scored here so far on the scorebook are the middle infield. Yeah, that one really hurts right there, loading up the sacks for Ray Holes Jr. Hits in the two spot, and the first offering to Ray is high for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Maniacs just seem to be playing a little bit tight defensively here out of the gate. You want to make a play. You think, I've got a possible double pitches low, ball two. You think um, you end up rushing the play, as a matter of fact. I'm not going to say that's what Jager did at shortstop, but it took a mean hop just before it got to him, got into his body. 2-0 pitch inside for ball three. Well, there's no place to put Ray Holes Jr. with the sacks loaded up with Bulldogs. Gavin's going to take a little time, take his cap off and readjust it. 
continues to work from the stretch with the sacks loaded up. And the 3-0 now on the way is a strike at the belt, 3-1. A couple of undefeated teams going at it. We'll see who can remain undefeated. The corners are in on the grass. Here's the next offering. Pitch is going to be fouled off the knob of Rahul's bat. CJ, he checked his swing, but it looked like the knob of that bat got out there and just fouled it off. Pitch that was a little high and tight. That would have been ball four. As it is, Rahul's Jr. now has a 3-2 pitch coming his way from Gavin. Letter high and comes to the plate a little high and outside ball four. And so he'll draw a base on balls, plus he'll pick up an RBI as Taven scores from third base. It is now four to three in favor of Orofino. When everybody moves up another 90 feet, Sickles now occupies third, Goikoa at second, and holds Jr. with the walk down at first. And that's just the first walk issued by Christofferson. Clement inside the first pitch, ball one. Silas is able to hop out of his crouch and bring that ball down from just behind the helmet of Cody. Cody, a tall young man as well, standing at home plate. The 1-0 pitch. Uh, again, just a little high, right around letter high. Two balls and no strikes to Cody. He went down looking at strike three back in the first inning. Christofferson's next pitch. There's a called strike again. Trying to locate that pitch right around letter high to the big right-hander. Cody left it alone. Two and one. Cody swings the bat well. He's swinging it at a 353 clip on the season. The pitch is high for ball three to Cody. Again, the sacks are loaded up with Bulldogs. Maniacs cling to a 4-3 lead. The Bulldogs looking to tie it up here with Cody at the plate. And again, Gavin does not want to give up anything to score a run if he could all hap keep it from coming across. Swinging strike. Must that was strike two. Excuse me. I, for one moment, I got ahead of myself. I was thinking it was 3-2 already. Three balls, two strikes. Gavin has the sign, and he deals to the play just outside for ball four. And what so the second, Silas. Con second consecutive walk now, and we are tied up in this ball game as Sickles scores from third base. It is four to four. That was a great effort from Silas trying to frame that, get that back in there. Just uh, not enough. Yeah. Tall right-hander Sam Lindsley coming up to the plate. Singled in his first at-bat, stole second, but was called out on interference. Pitches low and away, gets away from Naranjo, but stays right in the cutout at home plate for ball one. You know, Jeff, you were talking before the game about how didn't think this was going to be a shootout, but... Uh, yeah, look, look at like it. <laughs> look at it. So we have courtesy runners coming out for the corners. Over at first, it's Williams, and over at third, running for Goikoa is Poxleitner. One ball, no strikes as we get ready to get back into play here as Lindsley steps back in. Gavin bends slightly at the waist, and now he'll come with the 1-0 pitch. Fastball, there's a called strike. And again, just talking about how Silas frames that pitch, CJ, that's exactly what he did on that last offering. It was a bit of a curveball, broke to the outside. One ball, one strike. Gavin deals to the plate inside for ball two. Lindsley with a single already on the day. He's a big hitter for Grangeville. 455 his average. Two balls and a strike to Lindsley, and instead turning around and looking the runner back to second. Rahul's Jr. was getting more than a quarter of the way up the baseline. Christofferson wants to keep him close by. 
2-1 is going to be swung on. Fly ball to right center field, and it'll be the right fielder out there, Hudson, who makes the catch, tagging up at third and scoring is Goikoa to give the Bulldogs the lead on the play. Holes Jr. goes from second to third on the sacrifice fly off the bat of Lindsley. So two away now for the Bulldogs and they have reclaimed the lead. It is five to four. Yeah, it's just unfortunate for Gavin. He's struggled that falling behind in the account or in the account he's been pitching from behind much of the ball game jt jackson at the plate for the bulldogs takes a fastball just inside ball one argon the designated hitter is on deck runners at the corners for grangeville holes jr at third Clement at first. Pitch is going to be swung on. A little looper right into the glove of the second baseman, Howell, and that will retire the side. The Bulldogs put up a three spot here in the top of the second inning of play on one hit, an error, and they left two out there. It is 5-4, Greenfield. Bottom of the second, who do we have, CJ? Top third of the order, Olive, Donovold, and Howell. We'll try to get it going for the Maniacs after this. Today, your dollar needs to stretch a little further than previous. At Watson's Market or Afino, we invite our senior citizens to shop Thursdays. Every Thursday, receive a 10% discount on all your shopping. Senior Discount Day is Watson's Market or Afino's way of helping our community in times of flush or thin. For saving up and down every aisle, thank you for choosing Watson's Market or Afino. Open seven days a week and a 10% discount on Thursdays for seniors. Watson's Market or Afino. We toss them. They're awesome. Pizza Factory. It's back, fresher and hotter. The Pizza Factory reintroduces the all-you-can-eat buffet. Lunchtime in Orofino means all-you-can-eat pizza, breadsticks, sauce, and a delicious salad bar packed with fresh greens, fruits, proteins, and dressings. The Pizza Factory All-You-Can-Eat Buffet is Monday through Friday, 11 to 2. Make the all-you-can-eat buffet your next lunchtime stop. We toss them. They're awesome. Pizza Factory. And we welcome you back once again, Family Eye Care and P1FCU, our proud Maniac backers all through the year here on KLER Orfino and streaming on YouTube channel KLER AM 1300. Well, here we go to the bottom of the second inning. Olive will start it off again. Jack knives out of the way of a first pitch fastball from Goyko. Aiden singled and scored for the Maniacs back in the bottom of the first innings. Pitch is going to be swung on a little nubber out to second base. Ebert gobbles it up. S clutches a second time and it's not in time. Yeah, honestly it wasn't oh. even close. It <laughs> wasn't either. But you take a look at Taven Ebert, CJ, and you thought why is he having problems throwing that ball? I mean it got to him in an awful hurry. I'm not sure if maybe it slipped out of his hand a little bit, but Aiden is going to reach and again we're going to give him another single. Little bleeder to the right side. Jagger Tonneville now at the plate. High to Jagger. One ball and no strikes. That was a balk. Oh, a balk has been called, so there's no pitch. Aiden Olive goes to second. So there is no pitch. Now the first offering, high and away for a ball, 1-0 and oh, to Jager. Not sure I didn't see David take the ball out of the glove. I didn't see him make a motion and then stop as he works from the stretch, 1-0. Ground ball to the right side, and there's nobody covering first base. <laughs> J.T. Jackson went hard to his right. Taven Ebert fields the ball deep. Behind first base, David Goyko is supposed to be the guy to cover the bag, and he didn't. At and so Jagger reaches a single to Jagger, and on the play, Aiden goes from second to third. Maniac's able to take advantage of some miscues. A little defensive miscue for Grangeville, you bet, CJ. See if they can turn it into something. Two aboard, nobody gone. Fastball misses outside. One ball, no strikes to Bodie. And, and another balk. Another balk. 
Holy schmoly. Again, CJ, so did you see? I did not see David remove the ball from his glove. I didn't see him change his motion or anything what what if anything did you see it's no i looked up i looked up to the to the call from the official i was writing in my book now the first pitch to bodie he's going to swing at this one and foul it away off to the right out of play so that knocks it up at five all so aiden singled went to second on a balk advanced to third and then came home on another balk Nothing in one. The pitch to Bodie. He lays off of a slow change for strike two. At second base, Jagger Tonneville. We're all knotted up at five runs apiece from the stretch. The next offering. A little outside. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. Pitch came in a touch high to Bodie. And it broke away from the right-handed hitter. He left it alone wisely. Now the 1-2 on the way to young Mr. Howell. Fastball inside for ball two. Two and two. Well, CJ, again, uh, like you said just a moment ago, I was thinking a 2-1, you know, 3-2 two, two game. It's already 5-5. Five, five. Pitch is swung on. This one's going to be popped up high. Third baseman Mont venturing over into foul ground, and he will make the catch for the out. And there's one away here in the Maniac half of the second inning. That thing went a mile in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little underneath that one, CJ. A tad. Just a tad. If he finds the meat of that ball, that's going to go a long way over the fence there in left field. Dash Barlow with one gone and one aboard here for Orofino. Again, we're in the bottom of the second inning, and he fouls off the first pitch, strike one. Barlow Main with a sack fly RBI his last time up. Yeah. And again, this is, uh, uh, you have to deal to a couple of left-handed hitters here in the top of the order. Here's the 0-1 now on the way to Dashel. Eh, just a little outside, according to our home plate umpire. Ball one, one ball, one strike. Quick check of the runner at second, and the fastball low, framed by Clement. He wants to pull it up into the zone, but our home plate umpire says no, it started low and it stayed low. Two balls and a strike. We've talked about the late heroics of the other lefty standing at second base. Dash pretty darn good in the clutch as well. He's had some moments throughout the years. And a called strike to Dash. Dash wanted to pull the trigger, CJ. There was something about it he just didn't like, left it alone. Steps out of the box, now back into the box. Two balls, two strikes. Here's the Goyko delivery. Swung on, and this one's going to get hit out into left field. Don't think it's enough to, oh, score the run, but Sam Lindsley overran the ball. Holy schmoly, and the Maniacs have retaken the lead, six to five. Wow. So it's a single to dash. You can't give him an RBI because Jagger Tonneville held up at third and only came home when Sam Lindsley had the air fielding the ball out there in left field. Three hits here in the inning for the Maniacs. That's going to bring Silas Naranjo to the plate. Orofino leads at 6-5. We are in the bottom of the second inning. Fastball swung on, hard hit, ball out into center field. So Silas joins the hit parade as he singles. Dash goes from first to second. And the Maniacs right now are finding a hole in the armor of David Goyko, CJ. Boy, howdy. There's nothing he hasn't thrown up there that Orofino hasn't offered at. Yeah, the Maniacs finding their rhythm at the plates, just taking what they're given. Fastball low. It's in the dirt. Knocked down by Clement behind the plate for ball one. And you could tell he was putting everything into that pitch that he had. <laughs> <laughs> 
And now our fielding umpire is going to come out and have just a short visit with David. I don't know. It, is David awfully close to just removing his foot from the rubber? He plants that foot onto the first base side of the rubber. Now he'll come set. And now he delivers. High. Ball two. I just don't see anything in his delivery that uh, has gotten one, two, three box now. Two. Pitch is just a touch high. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I see him now. At second base is Barlow. Silas over at first. There's one gone, and the Maniacs have two across here in the frame. A uh, good looking offering that's taken for a strike on the outside. Landon says, I've got a red light. I'm going to go ahead and keep the bat on my shoulder. Three balls and a strike. Next pitch. Outside for ball four. Landon just about tossed the bat and thought, wait a minute, i got to wait. But he draws a base on balls. That's the fifth walk issued by Goikoa CJ in this baseball game, and that loads up the sacks with Maniacs. Number seven, Ethan Gilmore. Table set. On deck, Christofferson. So at third is Barlow, Naranjo at second, Hudson at first. Gilmore comes to the plate, and here's the first pitch to him. Swung on, a little chopper to the left side of the infield. Shortstop's got it. The toss is in the ground, and scoring from third base for, is Barlow. That'll be a throwing error on, was that Bransford? It was Bransford who made the throwing error. Mm -hmm. And safe at first is Gilmore. Wow, things just not going right defensively for either team. You know, you're all of maybe 40 feet away from home plate, and Bransford just unfortunately held onto the ball too long and he threw it into the dirt in front of home plate. Christofferson, he'll take a pitch at the hands for a called strike. So with another runner across, that moves Naranjo to third. Hudson is at second. Gilmer at first. Again, the infield on the skin of the infield taking strike two is Gavin nothing and two now so the Maniacs came into the inning or into the frame at down a run now they're up two here's the 0-2 oh that hit Gavin right on the back of the helmet so that picks up another run as Silas scores from third base and Gavin down at first base hit by a pitch And you just take a look at the uh, coaching staff for the Bulldogs. They came awfully close from stepping across the line. At bat, number 20. Wondering if maybe they need to change out their pitcher. Right now, Orofino up three runs, eight to five. Loudon Cochran with the sacks juiced, swings at a pitch inside, strike one. Yeah, it's tough because you're hesitant to take out your ace against a team like Orofino. Here's the pitch on the way to Loudon. Inside, ball one. The infield on the grass. And again, Hudson, Gilmore, and Christofferson at third, second, and first, respectively, for the Maniacs. One gone here in the frame. Swinging strike. Loudon chased a pitch, really, in the zone, just a little outside, maybe. Couldn't come up with a bat and ball mixture. All nine Maniacs have seen the plate here in each of the first two innings. The one-two on the way to Loudon, swinging strike three, and that'll do it for Cochran. Second out for the Maniacs. And we go now to the top of the order where we started this frame at. Two away now, and Aiden singled and scored earlier this frame. Fastball taken, ball one. Aiden looking for a spot to put this in the outfield grass. High for ball two, the next offering from David. The infield is moved back to their regular defensive positions now. 
with two away. Here's the 2-0. Swung on a chopper to the left side. Throw from short to second and on the force, Gilmore is out. And that'll do it for the Maniacs. One, two, three, four runs here in the bottom of the second. Orofino takes an 8-5 lead as we go to the top of the third. CJ, who's coming up? When we come back, it'll be 6, 7, and 8 in the order. Aragon, Ebert, and Sickles after this. Back pain is one of the most common causes for patients seeking emergency care. At Peak Physical Therapy, our team of professionals are dedicated to helping you achieve maximal function results in body movements, helping you avoid the need for emergency care. Peak therapists can help with lifestyle choices, including walking, strength training, changing posture, and other movements to help you today. Stop by on Michigan Avenue and ask about a free consultation that will help to change your life today. You know what nobody misses? Dial-up internet. The same goes for monthly checking account fees. P1FC use Ascend Checking is free. Plus it has all sorts of free benefits, like remote deposit, credit score monitoring, and more. Meanwhile, some people are paying as much as $12 a month for their checking. Some things should just be free. Open your P1FCU Ascend Checking today at p1fcu.org slash free. Insured by NCUA. Well, at the end of the game, we hope that you'll listen in as we bring you the Pizza Factory player of the game. And uh, again, the recipient will receive a personal pizza and a medium soft drink of their choice from our good friends at the Pizza Factory. Here we go to the top of the third inning and to bring you the action here is C.J. Thompson. Up to the Leading things off the for the uh, Bulldogs so will be a Taven Ebert. Today's starting second baseman. He's a one on for deck. one on the Kevin day. Ebert. The single and a run score. Christofferson back out on the bump. Winds and delivers the first pitch. A fastball for a called strike. Well, Christofferson has struck out one. He has walked two CJ. He's given up five runs on just three hits in an error. Now the 0-1 delivery swing, and looks like he got a piece, 0-2. This is a big kid standing down there, the DH, James Argon. Holy Toledo. A lot of big kids on Grangeville. Christopherson, the 0-2 pitch with a waste pitch. It is away. That's exactly where Silas was set up, too, CJ. You look at him set up on the outside, see if they can induce a swing out of Argon. Now the one-two delivery, and that is low for ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Gavin's given up the five runs on three hits so far, and he rings him up with a good-looking breaking ball. That is the second strikeout here of the ball game for Gavin, and a good start to the top of the third. Taven Ebert. He got Ray Holes going down his first looking strikeout back in the first CJ on a uh, ball placed just on the inside. He went to the outside on Argon, got him looking. And now here is a Taven Ebert, and he comes in high in tight. Four ball one. Now the 1 0 delivery well upstairs. Two balls, no strikes. Ebert with a single and a run score. Now the 2-0 delivery. Swing and a miss for strike one. I'm not sure how Taven was approaching that last pitch, CJ. He must have had a lot of down to it because he swung way over the top of it. The 2-1 pitch to the plates in there for a strike on the outer part of the plates just above the knees two and two not even a bit of sunshine here at the ball field the 2-2 two -two pitch swing and a miss gets a fastball by a swinging Ebert and two straight strikeouts to start off the top of the third for Cabin well I know a lot of people were hoping that there were going to be some sun breaks today as we had the lunar eclipse today, the solar eclipse. Did you go outside and burn your eyes or anything like that? With I, I did not. 
Wouldn't Here, <laughs> Case and Sickles <laughs> takes a ball up high. You wouldn't admit to it anyway, would you? Nah. No wonder I can't see the field. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> The wind up and the 1 0 pitch. A called strike at the knees to Sickles. Sickles was hit by pitch and came around to score in the second. Gavin gets that by a swinging uh, Sickles as well. Had slider movement to it. The ball and two strikes. Now the one-two delivery to Sickles. Swing and a miss for strike three as Gavin Christofferson able to find his groove and strike out the side here in the top of the third. No runs, no hits, no errors. None left out there. It is eight to five, Orofino. All right, when we come back for the Maniacs, we're going to be looking at headers two, three, and four. Jagger Tonneval, boy yeah, how, yeah, and Dash Barlow after this. Like most backseat drivers, I'm all about safety. Dad, pothole. Got it. So Les Schwab tires makes my job easy. The surfaces like brakes, steering, and alignment. Those cheap tire centers just throw on tires. And that's it. Now, I'm not telling people how to do their job. Linker. I'm just glad Les Schwab takes safety as seriously as me. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Doing the right thing since 1952. It's in park, right? Attention Orofino, Clearwater Valley Health announces new clinic hours. In order to bring our staff up to date with new trainings, the first Wednesday of each month, the Orofino Clinic will be closed until 9.45 in the morning. The first Wednesday of each month, the Orofino Clinic will open at 9.45 for appointments. Again, the first Wednesday of each month, clinic hours begin at 9.45. The Orofino Health Clinic thanks you for your understanding, and we look forward to helping you in your healthy lifestyle. And we're back as Watson's Market and Les Schwab Tire are two of the fantastic sponsors helping to bring you the Maniacs here on 13 KLER and on our YouTube channel streaming at KLER 1300 AM. I'm Jeff Jones along with CJ Thompson. And CJ, we got a new pitcher out there warming up. As we do, Cody Clement it was behind the dish and now he will take over on the mound for Goey Koa who kind of struggled a bit through his two innings. Like to see who is behind the dish now. Is that Goey Koa? Is that just a straight switch? I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, you can't really see the number on the back. He's got a one in front, <laughs> so that part's right. But, <laughs> uh, is that a two, though? That's the question, right? Yeah. One, two. Well, let's, let's just call it that until we know any different, because I do not see him anywhere else out on the field. Yeah, I think, I think he is the normal catcher for the... Bulldogs when he's not on the mound. And he fires it to second base, an absolute missile that pops out of the glove of Ebert. Sorry, Bransford covering. As we get ready to get things underway. At bat, number one, Jager Tonnevold. On deck, At bottom of the third, Tonnevold. it'll be uh, Jager Tonnevold to lead things off as the Maniacs with a three run advantage, eight to five. Clement winds and fires his first pitch to the lefty. It is outside. 1-0. Tonnevold with a single and a run scored to his credit already. He also walked. Now the 1-0 delivery to the plates and a called strike on the outer edge. 1-1. One one. Bit of a different looks swing and a ball just past the glove of Taven Eber at second into right center field and another base knock for Jager Tonnevold and the Maniacs in business here in the third so the book of course closed on Goy Koa he gives up eight runs on six hits and an error things not starting out too well for Cody Clement either uh, the first battery faces he gives up a single to Jager Tonnevold and now here is Bodie Howell. First pitch to Bodie is high. Yeah, it looks like a curveball. CJ started high, and it just didn't have the rotation in order to drop down below the letters. Donovan the lead over at first base. 
That pitch low and away with a breaking ball. 2-0. and Grangeville took a 2 to nothing lead in the first, but Orfino paddled back with a four spot in their half of the first as that misses high as well. Then Grangeville took the lead once again with the three spots, and Orfino answered right back, putting up four more runs of their own. And that pitch misses. Four ball, four, a four-pitch walk. We'll put Bodie Howell aboard, and that moves Tonnevold over to second base. Runners at first and second for the Maniacs. And Dash Barlow. Dash Barlow. So... Bulldog pitching struggling here. That is the uh, sixth walk issued by Hurlers. And the lefty Barlow takes uh, ball one. Yeah, one of the things that uh, David struggled with is he walked five without a strikeout. Dash singled to left in his last at-bat. Clement comes back inside against Dash, 2-0. Barlow's accounted for two of the team's eight runs. He had a sack fly ribby back in the first as well. Here's a pitch that stays up with a curveball. 3-0. Our home plate umpire just might tire with David Goikoa framing everything. It's well out, but Goikoa just brought it back in. Now the 3-0 pitch, and that misses four ball four. Two straight four pitch walks, and that loads up the bases with Maniacs. Back for the Maniacs, number four, Silas Nerano. Table is set for Silas Nerano. Silas went back to back with Dash in the second, that big second inning from the Maniacs. That first pitch way off the dish outside. Nice job by Goey to <laughs> yeah. snag that. Again, we've talked about the athleticism of this kid here, either on the mound or now behind the dish, and there's not much that's going to get past him. He's got great feet. Infield up on the grass. Sears a swing and a ground ball to short. Bransford has it to throw home. Having to come off of the dish to make the catch is Goey Koa, and safe at home is Jager Donovold as he scores on the throwing air. Yeah, and I'll tell you, David really did a good job to drag that left foot behind him as he reached out across his body with that glove, and it just came off of the plate when he received the throw. I mean, that was a bang-bang play, but nonetheless, the Maniacs score it on a fielder's choice from Silas, and another run up there for the Orofino, 9-5 now. Joe bases loaded to four, Landon Hudson. Still nobody away. First pitch fastball fouled back into the net. 0 oh and 1. Hudson has walked a couple of times. He scored the first occasion. He'd like to get something to drop. Here's the pitch. And again, nicely framed by Goey Koa, bringing it up a bit. And called strike at the knees. 0 oh and 2. Look at this, nobody gone here, and we are in the bottom of the third. And here's a breaking ball in the waist pitch, and rings up Landon Hudson. Nice-looking breaking ball from Clements, and the seven first out the here in the, the third. Number seven, Ethan Gilmore. First strikeout on for Clements. Gavin Christofferson. Two strikeouts first, two walks, and that pitch fouled off. 0-1. One strikeout versus two walks. Now the 0 1 pitch to Gilmore. Fouled off. Got a hold of it. But sent it well foul on the right field side. Bases loaded. One away for Gilmore. Infield up on the grass. And a curveball inside. One and two. Ethan's been on board twice today, CJ, but he's still looking for his first hit. Now the windup and the one-two pitch, and a breaking ball got away from him inside and hit Gilmore, and that's going to score another run for the Maniacs as Howell 
will come across. Everyone else advances. Barlow to third, Nerano to second, and Gilmore at first. Give him a ribby. At back, number 12, Gavin Christofferson on deck. Yeah, you've got to stay in there and uh, let your body make contact with that pitch, and you're going to pick up that RBI. Now well, here's Gavin Christofferson, the first pitch from Clement well upstairs. Want to know. Three RBI in the ball game for Gavin. A two RBI single in the first, and he got hit by a pitch and brought one in in the second. Another, there's a fastball low as Gavin holds up the hand to stay the runner at third. Didn't really seem to get away from Goikoa too much. The 2-0 pitch, swinging a hard hit ball to center field, but right at Ray Holes Jr. will back up a few steps and make the catch. Tagging coming home from third base is Barlow, and C will score as the throw is cut off. Yeah, Gavin gave it a good ride, CJ, about uh, mid-distance, straight away center field, and Scotty is right there holding Dash on third base, and he tells him go after the catch is made, and... Dashiell came scurrying home, but you know he really didn't have to go that fast because the throw from Holes Jr. was not that hard. Now here is Loudon Cochran, swing and a miss at a pitch up and in. Loudon has struck out a couple of times. Looking to pick up his first hit of the ball game. Bases loaded two away, here's the pitch, it is low. A ball and a strike to Loudon. At first base is a Gilmore. Silas at second base. Runners at first and second. There's the pitch way up high. Two balls and a strike. The Maniacs have made hay in every single inning, CJ. I mean, they have not dropped off an iota. Two on, two away, and the pitch in there for a strike just below the belt. Two balls, two strikes. Two gone now. Loudon's got to protect. He's got ducks out there. Now the 2-2 two -two to the plates is high. Four ball, three full count. Loudon taking Clements the distance. Love to find something he can square up here. And to move back as Clements steps off and looks off Silas at second. Nerano, good speed at second base. Dancing around trying to get in the periphery as the runner runners go. Swing and a miss for strike three. And the throw fired to third, but that... Uh, Strikeouts is the final out here in the bottom of the third. But the Maniacs do some damage as they pick the up a three the runs the on a one hit in error, and they leave two out there. It's 11 to 5 for Fino, Jeff. All right, so it'll be the Bulldog half of the fourth when we come back. In the top of the frame, it's hitters 9, 1, and 2. Munt, Goikoa, and Holes Jr. after this. You know what nobody misses? Dial up internet. The same goes for monthly checking account fees. P1FCU's Ascend checking is free. Plus, it has all sorts of free benefits, like remote deposit, credit score monitoring, and more. Meanwhile, some people are paying as much as $12 a month for their checking. Some things should just be free. Open your P1FCU Ascend checking today at p1fcu.org slash free. Insured by NCUA. At Watson's Market Orofino, we wish to thank the community for trusting us for your family's grocery shopping needs. We do everything possible to bring you the lowest prices, highest quality foods, and the smiles you'll see on our employees every day. We believe in community and donate to area food banks, little league sports, and community-wide events. Hometown Values, our commitment to you from Watson's Market Orofino. Open daily when you need us the most. Watson's Market Orofino. There's the throw down to second base as we get ready to go to the top of the fourth. And Peak Physical Therapy, along with Kimberling Insurance, two proud sponsors of the Maniacs during this 2024 campaign. 
I'm Jeff Jones along with CJ Thompson, Gavin Christofferson ready to go to work and here's CJ. And it will be Carter Munt to lead things off for the Bulldogs against Christofferson. Gavin winds, a big old leg kick, fires a fastball in there that misses. 1-0. Maniacs looking snazzy in their all-black uniforms. The 1-0 pitch, a called strike at the knees. Framed by Nerano nicely again. The 1-1 pitch to Munts and a slow swing and a miss. A ball and two strikes to Munts. Here in the top of the fourth, the Orfeo Maniacs 11, the Grangeville Bulldogs 5. It's the first game of a scheduled doubleheader. The 1-2 delivery, a slider away. Two balls, two strikes. Mont waves that bat over his right shoulder. And the pitch from Gavin. Swing and miss. Four strike three. As they send it around the horn. Four straight strikeouts. Going back into the third inning from Gavin. His fifth total. And he's starting to get things going on the mound. At the top of the lineup for the Bulldogs. Number 12, David Goikoa. On deck, Ray Hole. Dangerous hitter here, though. David Goikoa. And swing and a one hopper into the glove of Tonneville that's short. He fires it across and it is in time to set down a Goikoa. Just one pitch and two away. Christofferson has been able to retire the uh, last seven Bulldogs that he has faced. Winds and fires the first pitch up high to Ray Holes Jr. 1 0. Holes Jr. struck out looking. Walked in a run as a slow swing comes up empty. Ball and a strike as Scavin has the Bulldog hitters off balance here in the fourth. Pitch to the plate, swing and a miss. Four strike two. He's just one strike away from another one, two, three inning. Able to strike out the side in the third. Here's the one, two to the Bulldogs center fielder. And it is low, four ball, two, two balls. And two strikes, evens up the count. A little bit chilly. Especially when you add in that wind chill. Now the 2-2 pitch, and caught him on the edge, on the outside edge. Strike three, rung him up, and another 1-2-3 inning as Christofferson sets down the Bulldogs in order. No runs, no hits, no airs, none left out there. It is 11-5 okay, for Fino. When we come back, it will be top third of the order. Olive Tonvold and Howell up after this. Like most backseat drivers, I'm all about safety. Dad, pothole. Got it. So Les Schwab tires makes my job easy. With surfaces like brakes, steering, and alignment, those cheap tire centers just throw on tires. And that's it. Now, I'm not telling people how to do their job. Linker. I'm just glad Les Schwab takes safety as seriously as me. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Doing the right thing since 1952. It's in park, right? I've seen this movie before. You have? This is the part where all is lost and the hero searches for hope. Then a mysterious figure reminds her that she has the farmer's home policy per guaranteed replacement cost and that her home will be rebuilt regardless of her limits or if the cost of materials has gone up. <laughs> That's really something. Get a whole lot of something with farmer's policy perks. Wait, I didn't ruin the ending, did I? Yeah, you did. We are farmers. Bum, bum, bum. At 622 Bryden Avenue in Lewiston, see me, Greg Kimberling, your local farmer's insurance agent. And we welcome you back once again as we head to the home half of the fourth here at the ball field at Orfino High. 
Maniacs carrying an 11 to 5 advantage. Bring home the win, Orofino. Sponsoring today's OHS broadcast, your friends at Peak Physical Therapy and Kimberling Insurance. As Aiden Olive leads things off, Clement fires the first pitch in there. At the top of the lineup, it is in there for a strike. Olive, a hot bat so far today. He's two for two. A couple of runs scored. Now the 0 1 pitch, a curveball in there. Able to drop that in for a strike. Clement had a rough start, but about halfway through the third, he was able to settle it down and really caught a groove as that's waste pitch way up high. Clement winds and fires the 2-2 pitch. A fastball dug out of the dirt. Little pop up in foul territory. And uh, Jackson will make the catch at first base for the first out. Stepping up to the plate for the Maniac, number one, Jager Tonnevold. On and here Bowie comes uh, Jager Tonnevold. Tonnevold also Eight, two. having a good day at the plate today. He's two for two. With a couple of runs scored, as well as a walk. That pitch misses for ball one. Clement winds and fires the 1 0 pitch. In there for a strike, a ball and a strike now. One and one the count. One and one. That pitch inside and high. Two balls and a strike. Now the 2-1 pitch. Nicely placed as he stays away from the lefty, but able to get it in the zone, 2-2. Two and two. The wind-up and the 2-2 delivery. Swing and a fly ball towards the gap in right center. Moving over Holes Jr. He's called off by Sickles, who will make the catch on the move. And there's two down. At bat, Bodie Howell on deck. Able to induce a couple of fly balls. Clements here in the frame as he puts a fastball over the head of Bodie Howell. Want to know. Now the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a pop up over and out of play. A ball and a strike now to Bodie. Bodie today reached on a fielder's choice and scored in the first. Popped out to third in the second and walked and scored in the third. Now the 1-1 one, one pitch, swing and a miss for strike two. The 1-2 to the plate, swing and a ball through the 5-6 hole on the left side of the infield, a two-out base knock for Bodie Howell. Maniacs looking for a little At bit of two-out magic Maniac. here in the fourth. Nine, Dash Barlow on deck. Five As they already carry an 11-5 to five a lead that obviously like to add to their cushion. Here's Dash Barlow. Barlow sent a single the other way in the second. As that pitch is high for ball one. It's also... Got a sack fly ribby to his credits. Walked and scored in the third. Been doing good things at the plate as Howell held on over at first. Here's a swing and a ball up the middle. Bransford has it in his glove. We'll step on second for the force outs, and that'll do it for the Maniacs here in the bottom of the fourth. They are held scoreless on one hit, no errors, and they leave one stranded out there, 11 to five, Orofino. When we come back, it'll be Clement, Lindsley, and Jackson to the plates after this.
Back pain is one of the most common causes for patients seeking emergency care. At Peak Physical Therapy, our team of professionals are dedicated to helping you achieve maximal function results in body movements, helping you avoid the need for emergency care. Peak therapists can help with lifestyle choices, including walking, strength training, changing posture, and other movements to help you today. Stop by on Michigan Avenue and ask about a free consultation that will help to change your life today. You know what nobody misses? Dial-up internet. The same goes for monthly checking account fees. P1FCU's Ascend Checking is free. Plus, it has all sorts of free benefits, like remote deposit, credit score monitoring, and more. Meanwhile, some people are paying as much as $12 a month for their checking. Some things should just be free. Open your P1FCU Ascend Checking today at p1fcu.org slash free. Insured by NCUA. Terry Bowling of Camus Financial Services and Riverside Physical Therapy say go Maniacs and win as we head to the top of the fifth here at the ball field at Orfino High. A couple of rivals duking it out. The Orfino Maniacs and Grangeville Bulldogs 11-5. to Orfino is in the lead as Gavin Christofferson back out on the hill starts off Clement with a pitch away. Clement 0 for 1. He did reach on an error and score. Here's the pitch, and there for a strike. Christofferson has pitched well to this point. Through four innings, given up the five runs on three hits. That pitch way high. Back to the backstop, two balls and a strike. Christofferson striking out six versus two walks. He's also plunked one batter. And the pitch, high. Three balls and a strike. As the sign and the 3-1 offering is inside for ball four. And Clement will toss the bat, head on down to first as the Bulldogs have a man aboard. At here in the, the fifth, ball. and that is their first base runner uh, since the Jason second. Jackson. Gavin on the year has pitched nine innings in three starts. He's got a 1-0 record, 4.667 ERA. Here's Sam Lindsley, first pitch low and away for ball one. Lindsley with a single back in the first. And a sack fly RBI in the second. Now the pitch to the big boy. Swing and a foul ball back into the net. Lindsley, all of, he's got to be 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Tall right-hander. Gives a little hip shake. A little shimmy. And the 1-1 one, one pitch swing and a miss. The bottom dropping out of that breaking ball. Ball and two strikes. Gavin will check on the runner. One on two away. Here's the pitch swing and a towering high fly ball to left field. Backing up to the wall. Cocker, this one is gone. <laughs> Sam Lindsley. With a two-run jack here in the top of the fifth. And that will cut the lead to 11-7. to seven. Lindsley showing off the power. Congrats to Lindsley, first one over the fence this season. Got it out of here in a hurry, too. So that cuts it At bat, to an 11-7 ball game. That first pitch up high to JT Jackson. My bad, my bad. Tongue twisted, tongue twisted time. 
Christofferson winds and delivers, and he hit him. Grangeville starting to get a little bit of life back in their dugout. Been a lot of miscues in this ball game from both teams. Couple of runs across, still nobody away. At back, Here is James Aragon. James Aragon on deck, Taven. Waves the bat over his right shoulder. Jackson at first held on by Barlow. Here's a curveball in there for a strike. Gavin really had it going. Let's see if he can find his rhythm once again. Shake it off. The 0-1 pitch, a fastball, a slow dribbler foul on the third base side. Jumps out to the 0-2 lead over the Bulldog designated hitter. See what he's got up his sleeve for the waste pitch. And a move over to first base. Gets Jackson diving back. Now the waste pitch to the plates and rung him up. Another strikeout for Gavin Christofferson. That one nicely placed at the knees as he picks up his first out here at back, Taven in Eber, the fifth. 11 to seven, Maniacs in the lead. David Ebert at the plate. That pitch away. Snap throw to first. And the tag not in time. One on, one away. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. A ball and a strike. Ebert one for two on the day. Single and a run scored. Now that pitch away. Gets away from Nerano. Scampering down to second base is Jackson on the wild pitch. Two balls and a strike to Taven Ebert. Grangeville trails by four. The 2 1 pitch, a swing, and a two hopper into the glove of Tonavold at third, and he fires to first in time. To set down Ebert, two third on the play goes Jackson. Looked like there was kind of a bit of indecision on Tonavold's part on what he wanted to do there as far as dealing with the runner between second and third. He almost looked like he was juking to get out of the way yeah. of that runner. And here is Kaysen Sickles with a runner aboard at third. And two away. First pitch fastball's high. Seven strikeouts here in the ball game for Gavin. Now that pitch low and away. Four ball two, two balls, no strikes. He loved to pick up this final out and get his team back to the plate. Grangeville's got a couple back on him. Now the pitch swing and a miss for strike one. Sickles was hit by pitch and scored in the second. Struck out swinging in the third. Gavin deals to the plates, taken for a strike. Evens the count up, two balls, two strikes.
Sickles with the bat over his right shoulder. Christofferson has the sign, and the pitch is low. Four ball three, full count. Full count to Sickles. Things started off with a walk to Clements. Then Sam Lindsley put it out of the yard for the two-run jack. As here's the pitch, swinging a hard hit foul ball on the left field side. Did uh, look like it made it to the creek. Count will stay full. Following that home run, Jackson got hit by a pitch. Was able to strike out Eric on looking, then induce a 6-3 ground out, but the runner moved to third. Here's the payoff pitch swing and a miss, and he got him. Able to strike out Sickles to end the frame. But the Bulldogs do pick up a couple runs, get two back on a hit, no errors, and they leave one out there stranded at third. It is 11-7. Orofino, when we come back, Nerano, Hudson, and Gilmore to the plate after this. At Watson's Market, Orofino, we wish to thank the community for trusting us for your family's grocery shopping needs. We do everything possible to bring you the lowest prices, highest quality foods, and the smiles you'll see on our employees every day. We believe in community and donate to area food banks, little league sports, and community-wide events. Hometown values, our commitment to you from Watson's Market, Orofino. Open daily when you need us the most. Watson's Market, Orofino. Hi, it's Corky here to make you a promise with Les Schwab Tires. We'll take care of your tires even after you buy them. Rotations, rebalancing, flat repairs, air checks, brake checks, alignment checks. And I'm out of time to list the rest of our included services. Point is, we give you and your dollar the most mileage possible. That's our best tire value promise. I'll pinky swear on it. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. Watson's Market and Les Schwab Tire are backers of the Maniacs here on AM13 at KLER Orfino and also on our YouTube channel, KLER 1300 AM. I'd like to welcome everyone listening in on our YouTube Stepping channel. Something we're Maniacs. extremely Number excited to be able to bring to folks Amanda that's Hudson. our Maniac faithful but have moved outside of the area. Here is Silas Narano to face Cody Clements. Clements, first pitch high. Want to know. First time he faced Clements, he reached on a fielder's choice. He's walked and singled, scored both occasions. As that pitch misses four ball two, two balls, no strikes. Now the 2-0 pitch to the plates in there for a strike at the knees. Two balls and a strike. Orfino four runs in the first. There's the pitch swing and a fly ball left field backing up Lindsley and he makes the catch. Good contact for Nerano but right at Lindsley in left. So for the Maniacs, they had four runs in the They're first, four in the bat. second, on deck. three runs in the third. So the fourth was the first inning that they did not pick up a run as here's a swing and a ball towards the gap in right center, but it is Sickles making the catch. And Landon Hudson goes down after one pitch. No, I just now here is Ethan, Ethan, Ethan Gilmore. Bases clear two away. Oh, Clement Chris has started to heat up on the mound for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs showing why they're still undefeated. Here's the pitch. First pitch to Gilmore. Taken away for ball one. Big breath for Clement, wastes no time. He winds and delivers low. Four ball two, two balls, no strikes. Yeah. Now the 2-0 pitch. 
Misses four ball, three, three balls, and no strikes. Gavin Christofferson open. He gets a chance to get in on the action here in the fifth. He's on deck. Loudon Cochran in the hole. As that pitch misses, four ball, four, four pitch walk. That is the third walk from Clement. And that's bring Gavin Christofferson to the plate. Gavin Cochran. Having a great day at the plate. He is a one for one with a two RBI single. He also got hit by pitch to bring in a run and brought one in on a sack fly. Here is the pitch. It is high. Four ball one. One to know. For the Bulldogs on the other side, they had two runs in the first, three in the second, and then two there in the fifth. As that pitch. Taking four ball two. Now the set and the pitch to the plate outside. Clement struggling a little bit again here, location-wise. Now the 3-0 pitch, grooved all the way for a strike. Hitters count here for Christofferson. Big old gap there in right center if he could send something the other way. And he fouls this one back into the net. Full count now to Gavin. Got to protect. On anything close. I'll tell you, I really do like the look of the new uniforms for the Maniacs. Payoff pitch to the plate. Swing and a pop-up straight up. Goey Koa tosses off the mask. And oh, well, that... Uh, you can bring that ball. Came down to the grassy area and looked like one of the Grangeville fans nearly barehanded it. Think that might have broke his hand. <laughs> Full counts to Christofferson. Man over at first, two away. Here's the pitch as the runner goes, and it is outside. So another walk, two straight walks. And there's runner at first and second. That is Loudon Cochran stepping up to the plate. Up to the plate. 22, Loudon Cochran. On Loudon deck, looking Aiden to put a ball in play. Waves the bat over his right shoulder. Here's the first pitch from Clements high. Clement checks on the runner now. Deals to the dish, swing and a miss. Four strike one, a ball and a strike to Cochran. Things started off good for the Clements here in the fifth as he induced a couple of fly ball outs, but two straight walks and the Maniacs with a chance to do something with two outs. Swing and a miss from Loudon. And the count is at one and two. Christofferson at first, Gilmore at second. That pitch high. Count even, two balls, two strikes to Loudon Cochran. Hitting ninth in the order. Top of the order, due up. Here's the pitch. High. Four ball, three full count. Loudon's got to be thinking, thinking fastball here. As the runners take off, swing and a miss. Four strike three as Clement able to end the threat. Here in the fifth, 
for the Maniacs. No runs on no hits, no errors. They leave it two stranded out there. It is 11 to 7. Orofino. And Update we'll take a break. But when we come back, it'll be months. Go Ecoa and Holes Jr. for the Bulldogs after this. We toss them. They're awesome. Pizza Factory. Deciding what's for lunch or dinner today is as easy as picking up your phone and calling Orofino's top pizza house, the Pizza Factory. Get that delicious pizza pie delivered to your home or work address. Every day of the week, there's great pizza, breadsticks, and sub sandwiches just to call away. 476-5519. Takeout available, too. We toss them. They're awesome. Pizza Factory. Once upon a time, there was a sleepy bear in search of a place to nap. Like the inside of a car. A coupe? Too small. An SUV? Too big. A station wagon? Just right. But as his eyelids began to get heavy, we covered it. Talk to farmers. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. For auto, home, life, and commercial insurance, see me, Greg Kimberling, in Lewiston at 622 Bryden Avenue. Welcome back once again. Family Eye Care and P1FCU are proud Maniac backers all through the year here on KLER Orofino and streaming on YouTube at KLER AM 1300. We go to the top of the sixth here at the ball field at Orofino High and the Maniacs carry an 11 to 7 advantage over their rivals, the Grangeville Bulldogs. It'll be Carter Muntz to lead things off for Grangeville against Gavin Christofferson going deep in this one after getting the start. First pitch from Gavin, a fastball in there for a strike. Gavin has the sign. Wheels and deals the 0-1 pitch, swinging a line drive into the glove of Tonavold at shorts, and there's one away. David Goicoa, next to, to the, to the plate, plate. For the Bulldog, David Goicoa, number 12, on deck, Ray Goicoa with a double to the wall to start off the ball game. He's hitless since. Here's the pitch. Uh, slider, look looked like. And misses. Goicoa doubled and scored, reached on an error and scored, then bounced out to shorts. Here's a breaking ball that is high. Two balls, no strikes. David Goicoa started on the mound on the other side as a fastball grooved in there for a strike. Two balls and a strike. Now the windup and the 2-1 pitch, fastball low. Three and one. The windup and the 3-1 pitch, misses four ball four. And that'll put Goey Koa aboard. Stepping up to the plate, number five, Ray Holes. Ray Holes Jr. Cody Clements. Now due up. Holes has struck out a couple of times. He also picked up an RBI when he walked in a run. In the second. Goey Koa on his first, held on by Barlow as the first pitch high. I think. Looks like Goey Koa is running for himself at the moment. Oh, actually he's not on the mound anymore. So that uh, pitch hits Ray Holes. And that'll put another man aboard. Runners at first and second now for the Bulldogs. Back, number three, Cody Clement. On deck, and that Cody is, I believe, the third batter that Gavin has hit. In this ball game, I know it. I know it. At this point. runners at first and second, one away for uh, Cody Clement. Clement took over on the mound. 
for the Bulldogs in the third, I believe. At first base, Holes Jr., Goey Koa at second. Now the pitch from McGavin in there for a strike. Clements reached on an error and scored in the first. Walked a couple of times, scored on one of those occasions. Here's the 0-1 pitch, a fastball for a strike as Christofferson jumps out to the 0-2 lead. See what Gavin comes with with the waste pitch. Go check on the runner. Now delivers to the plate, swing and a line drive, base hit up the middle. Off the bat of a Clements and putting on the brakes at third is a Goey Koa. At bat a base knock the for Bulldogs. Cody Clement that loads up the sacks with the Bulldogs. Grangeville making things interesting here. In the sixth. Table set for Sam Lindsley. And Sam has definitely swung the bat well. That pitch outside. Sam put one out of the park in his last at-bat. And he does represent the game at tying run at the plate. Bases loaded one away. And that one well off the dish away as Gavin tries to fire that one in there. Got to wonder whether Coach is thinking about just giving up a run and putting him on base. But no, he's trusting, trusting his pitcher to go at him as he gets it in there for a strike. You can tell Christofferson's been trying to put a little bit extra on it against Lindsley. And that pitch skitters away from Nerano as it was low. Three balls and a strike now, but Nerano keeps it in front. Lindsley dangerous at the plate. And then you he is two for two with three RBI and a run scored. Hitters count. Here's the pitch, and it is high for ball four, and I think that might have been a good decision there as they walk in a run. Holes Jr. will head to third. To second goes Clements, and Lindsley will take over at first. And it looks as though we are going to have a pitching change here at the ball field if I am not mistaken and we will it is 11 to 8 Orofino bases loaded with one away in the sixth we'll take a break we're back after this like most backseat drivers I'm all about safety that pothole got it so Les Schwab tires makes my job easy the surfaces like brakes steering and alignment those cheap tire centers just throw on tires that's it now, I'm not telling people how to do their job. Linker, I'm just glad Les Schwab takes safety as seriously as me. Help keep drivers and backseat drivers safe with Les Schwab tires. Doing the right thing since 1952. It's in park, right? Attention, Orofino. Clearwater Valley Health announces new clinic hours. In order to bring our staff up to date with new trainings, the first Wednesday of each month, the Orofino Clinic will be closed until 9.45 in the morning. The first Wednesday of each month, the Orofino Clinic will open at 9.45 for appointments. Again, the first Wednesday of each month, clinic hours begin at 9.45. The Orofino Health Clinic thanks you for your understanding, and we look forward to helping you in your healthy lifestyle. 
And welcome back once again. Be sure to tune in at the conclusion of today's game for the Pizza Factory Player of the Game announcements. As we'll be giving one Maniac player a certificate good for personal pizza and a medium soft drink of their choice from our good friends at the Pizza Factory Orofino. As we are here in the top of the sixth of the ball field at Orofino High. In a a little bit of a bases loaded jam that Dash Barlow will inherit. As Gavin will head over to first base. Gavin, no stranger to inheriting tough situations on the mound. Bases loaded, one away. Here is JT Jackson, and he takes a cut at the first pitch, sends a high fly ball deep right center field, backing up. Olive will make the catch, but tagging and coming home from third is Ray Holes Jr. He will score, and that cuts it to a two-run ball game, 11-9. To, to third goes Clement on the play. Lindsley will stay put at first. Give Jackson the sack back fly. Back for the Bulldogs, number 25, James Darwin. RBI, and there's two On away. Deck, Taven Ebert. Runners on the corners now for Aragon. First pitch from Barlow, a fastball in there for a strike. Barlow working from the stretch, sets and fires, swinging a hard hit ball to the gap in left center, moving back. Olive will make the catch on the move. What a play by Aiden Olive. And that will end the threat from the Bulldogs here in the sixth. But they do get a couple back. Grangeville picks up two runs on a hit. No errors, and they leave two out there. It is... 11 to 9, nine Orofino. Nine. When we come back, it'll be Olive, Tonavold, and Howell to up to the plate after this. You know what nobody misses? Dial up internet. The same goes for monthly checking account fees. P1FCU's Ascend checking is free. Plus, it has all sorts of free benefits, like remote deposit, credit score monitoring, and more. Meanwhile, some people are paying as much as $12 a month for their checking. Some things should just be free. Open your P1FCU Ascend checking today at p1fcu.org slash free. Insured by NCUA. Today, your dollar needs to stretch a little further than previous. At Watson's Market or Afino, we invite our senior citizens to shop Thursdays. Every Thursday, receive a 10% discount on all your shopping. Senior Discount Day is Watson's Market or Afino's way of helping our community in times of flush or thin. For saving up and down every aisle, Thank you for choosing Watson's Market or Afino. Open seven days a week and a 10% discount on Thursdays for seniors. Watson's Market or Afino. And we welcome you back once again. Bring home the win or Afino. Sponsoring today's OHS broadcast are your friends at Peak Physical Therapy and Kibberling Insurance. As we head to the... Bottom of the sixth here at the ball at the field at Orofino High. That, it is 11 to 9. Orofino in the lead. And Aiden Olive will face Clements. First pitch fouled straight back. And we're still trying to figure out the scoreboard. Now that pitch with a slider low and away. Ball and a strike to Aiden Olive. Clement winds and delivers, and that pitch is high. Two balls and a strike. Olive swinging the bat well. He's two for four with a couple of runs scored. Now the 2-1 pitch, a swing and a chopper to the left side. Charging Munt has it to throw across. And had to come off the bag to make the play. Swinging tag didn't make contact. 
And it looked like there was a collision there. As our officials confer, I believe that Jackson thinks that he made that is true. the tag or was calling for some sort of interference. I don't know. But Olive is safe at first base. At back for the Maniacs, number one, Jager Tonhold. On deck, number eight, Bodie Howell. And we're going to actually say that's on a throwing error. So a man aboard now for the Maniacs. And Jager Tonavold. And Olive takes off, and he is already sliding into the bag before Goey Koa could even think about letting that thing go. What a jump for Olive. And now the Maniacs with a runner in scoring position. Yeah. Want to know the count? Here's the pitch to Ton of Old, and that misses four ball two. Clements, check on the runner. Now sets and delivers. Here's the pitch, rips a ball right into the glove of Jackson at first, and moves Olive over to third as Jackson takes it to the bag himself. Set down, ton of old, three unassisted. Bodie Howell on deck, number nine, Dash Barlow. Now here's Bodie Howell with another run just 90 feet away. Howell takes a pitch up high. Howell picks up, picked up his first hits of the day in that last at bat in the fourth. Now the 1 0 pitch is high. Four ball, two, two balls, no strikes. The 2 0 delivery to the plates, watched all the way as it misses four ball, four, or ball three. Count at 3 and 0. Oh. Clement winds and delivers, and that misses four ball four. That'll put Howell on at down at first. Runners on the corners Barlow. now for the Maniacs, on and Dash Barlow. Four, Barlow with a, picked up an RBI on a sack fly in his first at-bat, then singled and scored, walked and scored, and hit into an ending inning. Fielder's choice. Yeah, I see that. Runners at first and third. Here's the pitch. Swing and a fly ball over and out of play to the old batting cages. Because it is 9 to 11. But I see what it is. Oh, and 1. Now Clements has the sign, that pitch way high. One and one to count to Barlow. Barlow, the lefty at the plate. The one one pitch wanted to pull the trigger but lays off of it as it misses low, two balls and a strike. Howell held on by Jackson at first, Olive at third. Here's the 2-1 pitch, high. Three balls and a strike. Barlow had a beautiful single back in the second. Yeah. 
Now the 3-1 pitch, swing, and a ball arcing towards the gap in left center, but right there is Lindsley to make the catch, and tagging coming home from third and scoring is Aiden Olive. Second sack fly of the ball game for Dash Barlow. And the Maniacs add another to their lead. They now lead it 12-9. Score it 12-9. I apologize for the scoreboard. <laughs> no, it's not you. No, it's not. Now here is Silas Nerano. The man aboard at first, two away. First pitch from Clements, Silas way upstairs. Want to know? Silas walked and scored his first time up, then singled and scored. Reached on a fielder's choice and flied out to left. Here's the pitch, and nicely placed on the outer edge. Ball and a strike. Goikoa nudges outside. Here's the pitch, fouled off. One and two. Big breath for Clement on the mound. He's trying to keep his team within striking distance. Norfino trying to give themselves a little bit more cushion as that misses way high. Two balls, two strikes. Nerano waves the bat through the zone. Clement fires to the plates. High, four ball, three, full count. Now the payoff pitch to the plate as the runner goes, swinging a fly ball right field. But right there is Sickles to make the catch. And that will do it for the Maniacs here. In the sixth, but they do add her onto their cushion on no hits, one error, and one left out there. It is 12 to 9, Orofino. When we come back, it'll be bottom third of the order. Ebert, Sickles, Munts, do up after this. In 1917, Hans Pete Hansen founded Hansen Garage. Owned by the family until just recently, longtime employee Doug Adams is now the new owner. With the promise to continue offering quality new and used cars, trucks, and outdoor recreational vehicle at fair prices, Hanson Garage aims to keep your trust. Superior service and treating customers right. That's owner Doug Adams and Hanson Garage Orfino. To get beauty sleep is one thing. However, sleep disorders can actually lead to ill health. Clearwater Valley Health would like to introduce you to our new sleep centers aimed at removing your sleep problems today. Interrupted breathing while sleeping, excessive daytime sleepiness, loud snoring, leg cramps, and chronic fatigue are all disorders your provider can talk to you about. Make an appointment today with your physician and call Clearwater Valley Health. Watson's Market and Les Schwab Tire. Both backers of the Maniacs here on AM 13 at KLER Orofino and on our YouTube channel, KLER 1300 AM. As we head to the top of the seventh here at the ball field at Orofino High, and the Grangeville Bulldogs down to their final three outs. They have to pick up three runs to extend the ball game as they trail 12 to 9. Dash Barlow out on the mound after taking over in relief of a Gavin Christofferson. He'll look to bring him home as Taven Ebert to lead things off. First pitch in there for a strike. 0-1. Grangeville scored two runs in the first. Then Orofino came back with four, but Grangeville responded with another three runs to take the lead 5-4 before Orofino put up four of their own to take an 8-5 lead hey. as Ebert fouls it back. You can bring that in for a Laffy Taffy. Then Orofino picked up their final three runs in the third to for the three runs to get them to 11. They just picked up another there in the sixth to make their way to 12. That fouled off as well. Count stays at 0-2 to Ebert. 
Grangeville with a couple of runs in the fifth and then two more in the sixth. To put the score at 12 to nine. Now the waste pitch to the plate, swing and a ground ball up the middle. Ton of old has it, and double clutches, fires to first, and there is one away. Ebert goes down 6-3, and the Bulldogs now have two outs. <coughs> It'll be up to Kaysen Sickles and Carter Munt to extend the ball game. Tayden Wasmith. Is it Tayden or Jaden? Uh, I don't know. Okay, I said Jaden. My bad, my bad. I believe it is Tayden. I know he was on. He is hitting for Kaysen Sickles. <clears throat> First pitch from Dash, low and in for ball one. Dash always working from the stretch. Sets and delivers. That pitch in there for a strike. Evens it up at a ball and a strike. To Wasmuth. Wave that bat over his right shoulder. He's a tall right-hander, well built. Now the 1-1 one -one pitch. Misses for a ball two, two balls and a strike. Dash, no stranger to finishing off ball games. He's a go-to in the latter innings. Here's the pitch. Fouled over and out of play. Finds the automatic ball return. And not quite so automatic. Needs a little bit of a trim. Two balls, two strikes. And Dash will step off. As the sign delivers to the plate, swing and a grounder to shorts, and ton of old fires across again, and showing off that arm as he sets down Wasmuth 6-3, making it look easy. And Gavin Christofferson, a good job on the dig. Here is Carter Muntz. Carter Muntz. Now Barlow with the first pitch, high with a curveball. Barlow sets and delivers. Sad pitch in there for a strike. Like a changeup from Dash. I know. And the 1-1 one, one pitch to Muntz is high. Two balls and a strike. Muntz on the day. He popped out to second. Then struck out swinging and lined out to Tonvold at short. Now the 2-1 delivery. Jammed him up in on the hands. Fouled it off. Two balls, two strikes. And Grangeville down to their final strike. Bases clear, two away. It is 12 to 9, Orofino. Counted two and two. Here's the pitch swing and a grounder to third. Gilmore gloves it. The throw across in time. And a one, two, three inning. Dash Barlow sets down the Bulldogs in order as the Orofino Maniacs defeat their rivals 12 to 9. Here in the opening game of today's uh, scheduled and doubleheader. And Orfino nice improves in to 9-0 and and on the uh, season. And we'll drop to Grangeville to 6-1. and a one, But we still have another game coming up. About six so still uh, pack up the family. Come Take on out if you want to watch some exciting Orfino Maniac okay. baseball. Support these student athletes well, that have good. worked so hard and they got a fantastic season going. 
12 to 9, our final score. The Orfino Maniacs over the Grangeville Bulldogs here in game one of today's scheduled doubleheader. We'll take a break and we're back with the post game show after this. Today, you have numerous options when selecting your IRA, and deciding which account is right for you is one of the most important decisions you will make for your financial future. Hi, this is Terry Bowling with Camus Financial Services. Give me a call to find out which IRA fits your financial needs or to update your current IRA saving strategy. You can reach me, Terry Bowling, at 476 7100 or stop by my office at 230 Johnson Avenue in Orfino to set up a free, no obligation appointment today. Securities offered through LPL Financial. FINRA SIPC. Hi, this is Terry Bowling with Camus Financial Services. I am available to help you select the right investment options when you are faced with early retirement, changing or losing a job, or any other lifestyle changes that warrant a review of your financial plan. You can reach me, Terry Bowling, at 476-7100 or stop by my office at 230 Johnson Avenue or Fino to set up a free, no obligation appointment today. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. You know what nobody misses? Dial-up internet. The same goes for monthly checking account fees. P1FCU's Ascend checking is free. Plus it has all sorts of free benefits, like remote deposit, credit score monitoring, and more. Meanwhile, some people are paying as much as $12 a month for their checking. Some things should just be free. Open your P1FCU Ascend checking today at p1fcu.org slash free. Insured by NCUA. Hi, it's Corky here to make you a promise with Les Schwab Tires. We'll take care of your tires even after you buy them. Rotations, rebalancing, flat repairs, air checks, brake checks, alignment checks. And I'm out of time to list the rest of our included services. Point is, we give you and your dollar the most mileage possible. That's our best tire value promise. I'll pinky swear on it. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing since 1952. And we welcome you back once again to the Orfino Maniac post-game show as the Orfino Maniacs able to defeat their league rivals, the Grangeville Bulldogs, 12-9 here through a six and a half. Let's take a look at the line score for the Maniacs. 12 runs on eight hits, three Bulldog errors, leaving 10 out on the base paths. And uh, for the Bulldogs, nine runs on five hits, two Maniac errors, and six left out on the sacks. And here is a Maniac a skipper, Scotty Tonnevolt, joining us once again for the post-game interview. Thank you, Coach, and good luck on another good victory. Thanks. For having us and thanks for being here broadcasting. And it looks as though Jeff turned that down before he left. I'm not quite sure why. But uh, all right, so another nice victory at 12 to 9. Uh, Got to be pretty proud of your guys for how they're playing. Absolutely. They just competed very well today, stayed in it even after the Bulldogs came out. Kudos to them, put two on the board on top of the first. We answered back, and it was a good ball game all around. Yeah, speaking of that top of the first, there at the end, we thought that uh, the inning had ended on, uh, you know, runner interference, and then Jager had also thrown out uh, the had thrown out the base runner at first. Uh, then we end up coming back out on the field. Uh, what happened? Yeah, so I'm actually not aware which rule it is. I need to get into the NFHS book to get clarification so I can educate myself. But we're told that as soon as there was offensive interference, that it's a dead ball, runners out, and the batter gets the base. So, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't know if that's exactly right because my question to the umpire was, hey, guys, question for you guys is, runner going from first to second, interference, both guys are out. So I just want a clarification. But at the end of the day, they both were very confident, and they're very respectable umps, and they do their job well, so I took them for their word. Very good. And uh, Gavin Christofferson had a little bit of a bumpy start on the mound, but seemed to find his rhythm and ended up pitching through some adversity. Got to be proud of the way he played. Yeah, Gav Gav's a great competitor, great teammate. He's got good energy. He's always positive. You know, even when things aren't going the way he wants, that guy will just get back out there and compete for his team and do the best he can. And um, we love having him in the program and just the energy he brings and the positivity. Yeah, Lindsley. Uh, bombed one on him there in uh, what was it in the fifth inning 
and uh, a lot of guys would have definitely been rattled by that, but he seemed <laughs> to be pretty unfazed. Yeah, you know, that's never going to feel good if you're a pitcher out there, but at the end of the day, he knew he had a job to do. He still had a pretty pretty good a couple of run lead to where he just needed to go back to work and flush it, and, and he did that. And, you know, kudos to Lindsley Kid for, I think it was a one-two count, left one up and kind of threw it right into his bat, and he, he barreled it out of here. Good for him. And it seems as though when you know you've got a game uh, in a striking range, uh, you got a little bit of a lead, your go-to seems to be Dash Barlow on the mound. Is he just a guy you have a lot of confidence in in clutch moments? Yeah, so so the biggest thing with Dash is he's not, not much rattles that guy. He really is confident in himself, and he knows what his capabilities are, and he has a role to do, and he goes out there and throws strikes for us. He'll keep us in games and get us out of games just because he pitches to contact, and he does it well, and, and he knows it. So, yeah, he's a guy we lean on quite often when we're looking for someone to go throw strikes and get us some ground ball fly balls. Very good. So who are you going to throw here in game two? Uh, we're going to go Silas Naranjo. Silas is going to start us off on the bump. We'll get Gavin behind the dish, and then the rest of the lineup looks pretty much the same across the board. Give Silas a little break on his knees. Yeah. We'll <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not much of an arm break, but we'll give him a little rest on the joints and the hips and all that. All right. Well, great win, and I'll let you get to it. Uh, good luck here in game two. Yeah, I appreciate you guys coming out and doing this. Thanks, Thanks CJ. For the world. That is Maniac Skipper Scotty Tonnevold, everyone. 12 to 9, our final score. Maniacs win it. We'll take a break. We're back with some individual statistics and the Pete's Factory player of the game after this. The morning paper arrives and you just can't extend your arms far enough to focus on the print. Does this seem like a typical day for you? Help is just an appointment away with Family Eye Care and Orofino and Cami Eye. Dr. Rick Lundgren is the Valley's trusted optometrist when it comes to your eyesight. Family Eye Care's highly trained staff will make sure your family has the finest in air care and eyewear. Call for an appointment and let Dr. Rick Lundgren perform a complete eye examination with the latest technology available. Single lens, bifocal, or progressive eyeglasses. Accentuate your personal style with statement making glasses contact lenses, sunglasses, and designer frames. Family Eye Care on Michigan Avenue, Orofino, and on Highway 12 West in Kamei is your stop for name brand frames, optics, and people who really care about your eyesight. Family Eye Care, where most insurance coverage is accepted along with major credit cards. We put your family first at Family Eye Care. Today, your dollar needs to stretch a little further than previous. At Watson's Market or Orofino, we invite our senior citizens to shop Thursdays. Every Thursday, receive a 10% discount on all your shopping. Senior Discount Day is Watson's Market or Orofino's way of helping our community in times of flush or thin. For saving up and down every aisle, thank you for choosing Watson's Market or Orofino. Open seven days a week and a 10% discount on Thursdays for seniors. Watson's Market or Orofino. Attention Orofino, Clearwater Valley Health announces new clinic hours. In order to bring our staff up to date with new trainings, the first Wednesday of each month, the Orofino Clinic will be closed until 9.45 in the morning. The first Wednesday of each month, the Orofino Clinic will open at 9.45 for appointments. Again, the first Wednesday of each month, clinic hours begin at 9.45. The Orofino Health Clinic thanks you for your understanding, and we look forward to helping you in your healthy lifestyle. And we welcome you back once again to the Maniac Baseball post-game show following the Orofino Maniacs a victory over the Grangeville Bulldogs here in game one of a scheduled uh, double header. Maniacs take it 12 uh, to 9. Uh, the victory goes to Gavin Christofferson, who goes uh, five and a third, uh, giving up nine uh, runs on uh, five hits while striking out eight. Walking six, he did hit three batters. And <clears throat> Dash Barlow came in in relief and uh, went one and two thirds to finish off the ball game. The loss goes to. David Goikoa, who goes <clears throat> two innings, giving up eight runs on six hits, striking out two while walking five and plunking one batter. And we have one thing left to cover, and that is the Pizza Factory player of the game honor. Lots of guys tossing their hat in the ring. You'll have to stay tuned to find out who gets it. We are back after this. 
Today you have numerous options when selecting your IRA and deciding which account is right for you is one of the most important decisions you will make for your financial future. Hi, this is Terry Bowling with Camus Financial Services. Give me a call to find out which IRA fits your financial needs or to update your current IRA savings strategy. You can reach me, Terry Bowling, at 476-7100 or stop by my office at 230 Johnson Avenue in Orfino to set up a free, no obligation appointment today. Securities offered through LPL Financial Member. FINRA SIPC. Hi, this is Terry Bowling with Camus Financial Services. I am available to help you select the right investment options when you are faced with early retirement, changing or losing a job, or any other lifestyle changes that warrant a review of your financial plan. You can reach me, Terry Bowling, at 476-7100 or stop by my office at 230 Johnson Avenue or Fino to set up a free, no obligation appointment today. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Make 2024 the year that you fulfill your wish of a healthier, stronger you and start by visiting Peak Physical Therapy. Find value in strength training no matter what your age. Let Peak Physical Therapy and their staff show you training tips for beginners and more advanced exercisers. Feel better, look better, and become healthier. Your first step begins when you walk through the doors of Peak Physical Therapy, Michigan Avenue, Orofino. We're awesome. Pizza Factory. Nothing quite says family happiness like the deliciousness of a piping hot pizza or flatbread from the Pizza Factory. On Michigan Avenue, Orofino, the Pizza Factory has four new mouth-watering flatbreads. Pesto, artichoke, and tomato flatbreads, also available with buffalo chicken or tomato bacon and olive oil. For a limited time only, come in today and try the new flatbreads. We toss them. They're awesome. Pizza Factory. And we welcome you back once again. The Orfeo Maniacs pick up the victory in game one of two uh, between the Maniacs and the Grangeville Bulldogs. They're Central Idaho League rivals. And uh, Maniacs won the ball game at 12 tonight. One thing left to cover, that is tonight's Pizza Factory player of the game honor. Definitely could have go. Could have gone to uh, multiple guys. Aiden Olive hit really well in the one spot. Jake Ertonvold again uh, in the uh, two spot. But I think we got to go with the guy who did it on uh, both sides. Uh, he did struggle a little bit, but pitched right through it and actually ended up pitching really big for the Maniacs. Gavin Christofferson as he picks up the victory, going five and a third. Giving up nine runs on five hits while striking out eight, walking five, and hitting three. But also on the other side, Gavin with a two RBI single in the first to get the Maniacs on the board. And uh, <coughs> then he ended up picking up another RBI in the second, a sack fly RBI in the third, and walked again in the fifth. So congratulations, Gavin, for your efforts to receive a certificate good for personal pizza and a medium soft drink of your choice from our good friends at the Pizza Factory in Orofino. And that wraps things up for today. Come on out and support the Maniacs as they battle the Bulldogs in a game two. We'll be right back at it here on Wednesday as Colfax will be in town. It'll be a night game, pregame at 540, first pitch at 6. Again, like to thank everyone for tuning in, as well as Coach Scotty Tonavold for coming up and doing the post-game interview. We definitely appreciate it, and uh, we hope that you'll tune in again on Wednesday as the Maniacs battle the Colfax Bulldogs. That does it for today. I'd like to wish everyone a very pleasant good evening. KLER would like to thank you for listening in today to another Orofino High School Athletics presentation of Maniac Baseball. Today's game has been brought to you by many fine community backers, and they thank you for supporting your local kids. We hope you'll continue to listen in for more from our season-long coverage of Maniac Baseball, or if you know High School Baseball, a Central Idaho broadcasting sports presentation on KLER and our streaming partner, KLER 1300 AM.